All right, guys, back again with Kyle Douglas uh, Luke's Luxifer. I always said that wrong the whole time last time. And so did Luxifer. Luxifer. Yeah, it's Luxifer. So. Yeah, Luxifer. Yeah. So back again. Last year he was on and he was extremely tired. He was actually fully asleep, but it made it for a <laughs> fun conversation because you were um, dazed, I would say. <laughs> I was, yeah, I don't know. I was real tired. I didn't even know what time it was. It was a mix of jet lag, driving an RV across the country, and doing burnouts in three different states. And trying to find as many pubs as we can for a beer. Mm. There's quite a few pubs. I don't know if they call them pubs. <laughs> pubs <but> bars. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're a pub to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, close enough. But now you're back again for Cletus and Carr's, um, the Freedom 500 deal, Burnout Rivals. I don't yep. know if they call this event something different than all the other ones because there's like four throughout the year, I guess. But... Back again. Um, anything different on the car? I know last year the blower kind of stopped blowering. <laughs> uh, the belt stripped. <laughs> yeah, I thought a bearing went because it was tight. Nah. Just a nah, belt? Just a belt. Okay. Yeah. So belt so stripped. So I, I hope it's just a belt. So uh, <laughs> You haven't, you haven't so <laughs> assessed it at all? <laughs> no, no, a little bit. I looked at it. Um, so it was hot, obviously, because it had done two burnouts in a row, more or less. And we just pushed, I just pushed it into... Garrett Shed, and he looked after it for me. So that was my knowledge of, and he uh, he said, do you want us to do anything to it? It's like, no, no, just leave it. I'll, I'll sort it out when I get back, and I'm back. And uh, started up yesterday after changing a sensor that had gone bad while it rolls in Australia, and it sounds fine. Hmm. Did you lock the tune, make sure you didn't, you know... Look uh, at it at all. <laughs> well, Make sure Gary didn't uh, try uh, to steal any of your secrets. <laughs> well, yeah, you, nev you never know. It's... Uh, yeah, it's hopefully good to go. Yeah, that um, anything different on the car at all though? Just same car, just just how it left the pad uh, last year at the end of the year is how it's going to go back on there. Because everyone around you has leveled up, and you're still confident that car. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? And I was talking to Jay. Well, they've all leveled up. They can level up, yeah. And and this is great. This is exactly what I was aiming for. Um, we haven't started the whole real trash talking between competitors yet because I just I'm in a stage where I'm just trying to give them advice and help them out you know it's uh when they start getting closer to you know like like the level I think they, they can be mm -hmm. that's when we can really start having some fun and and you know having a good time but mate I um to be that's honest with Seth, you Seth step it up dude yeah Seth you got a long <laughs> way to go mate <laughs> um it's, uh, but no, as I said, in the off season, a lot of the guys are leveling up and it's great to see. It's like they're taking it seriously. They're getting their house deposit. They were saving up for a house and they've now just tipped that into a burnout car. Smart financial decisions. Yeah. Um, Housing market sucks anyways. You yeah. Might so you, you can, car. you know, you can live in your car, but you can't drive your house. So the burnout car market is <laughs> on the rise. The housing <laughs> yeah. market is, the, yeah. she's done. Yeah, that's right. And it's what gives you fun in life. So, so the guys are really putting their efforts in. So basically, um, Mate, I'll let them catch up. And as I said, I can't really do too much more. I can turn it up, but I don't. I don't feel like I have to. It's uh, I can drive harder, a lot harder. And I was saying to James the other day, I said, um, when the Aussies get here, you will see me drive a lot differently. I will start taking massive risks because that's what separates people from the crowd is when you take risks. And I don't feel like I need to unnecessarily risk it right now. So are you telling me that last year when you won back to back? That was your light tune-up in driving. That, that was, was light tune-up. Taking that was, it easy on everyone, and you unanimously. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sunday driving sort of stuff. Saying that, my first tip in on the pad, ever skidded on that pad, I overshot it, and I just underestimated the grip that was there. Overestimated the grip that was there. So I, it sort of shot me into the wall, and there was a good video of it that went like super. So you viral. thought it was going to have more traction out there? Or you thought I thought it was going to pull up a lot better. Um, but being as that pad was quite new, and they don't skid on it a lot, like Australian pads are really grippy. For some reason, it was like Bambi on ice out there, and I nearly got stuck in the wall on my first tip in. So mm -hmm. once I figured that out, I was like, "Hey, Kyle, don't you know? Don't shoot overshoot things here." I was fine, but it was more in my head. I just knew I had to do go A to B. And my biggest thing is like, man, I've come here. I said I'm going to win these trophies. I need to not make a mistake. So I just took it easy, dude. And, and, and it's, it's not easy. It's just there wasn't where I was trying to get this close to a wall or, yeah. you know, I just, yeah, I was 
Just you weren't conserving. driving at ten tenths. You're I wasn't driving. driving I wasn't like driving like I was trying to be Ben at my seven tonight. eight tenths mm. of your yeah yeah, yeah ability yeah. to yeah. It's like Usain Bolt running the hundred meters. Like he's not going to push in the heats, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, until yeah. he has to. Yeah, until there's you kind of have to gauge the competition around, mm. and you know it sucks to lose because you just put it into the wall when you could have clearly won. Even turning it around, mm. you know, to do two burnouts. I know that's not your normal thing. Mm. Two burnouts in one event is odd, or and one it, night. Yeah, and I sort of stuffed up. I was busy in the moment, so I'm, like, watching all the other dudes, walking around, talking to people, and it was, like, halfway through the rivals, which is before the pro, and I was like, oh, i got to go. So by the time I lined up and got my stuff sorted, I was one of the last rivals, and then I had to turn it around pretty quick to go into pro. So realistically, I should have maybe got a bit sorted earlier, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it worked. The car yeah, wasn't too hot. First in rivals, then last in last pro, in pro to yeah. really have the car. Yeah, to, to give it the, enough time. And we had some issues. We had an oil leak we had to fix and just little things that happen, like you can't stop it. Um, yeah, we just should have been more onto it. But, hey, it is what it is. It, it all went fine. Yeah. Let's open up that because I want to put it on the on the TV. Cool. So well, got a gift for the studio, a fresh Luxifer license plate. To yeah, add to the studio. I so love these them. are out of my collection that go onto the car. Mm. So these are the real. These are special. These, these are these are the real deal. Hell yeah, <laughs> I appreciate deal. this. I love a good. Uh, oh, this is actually very real deal. Wow, this yeah. is this is not what I expected them to look like because I'm used to like the the Team metal ones. Yeah, like so these those are, over there. These are acrylic, custom cut, like mm-hmm. reverse printed. Like these are how they make number plates for real. Yeah, I wanted to put it up here while we yeah. talking. I like that. Oz, oh, it's funny if you have dyslexia, it almost looks like USA. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. If you squint your eyes, it's... Oh, yeah. if you have, you know, mm-hmm. like my brain where I just jumble up all the letters. Yep. <laughs> it looks from that. That's, that's really awesome, though. That that fits the uh, fits the theme. I'll have to figure out a spot for that. Do you drill holes in it? How do you do that? Yeah, you can drill holes. Okay. Just got to be careful you don't cr- uh, crack the acrylic. I've done that a few times. Yeah. Either a really brunt, uh, blunt drill bit or a really sharp drill bit. There's no real room for error in between there. So Get it really hot beforehand, maybe? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you probably burn a hole through it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I'll just put, like, some nails like that. And try to... <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that'll be it. I appreciate that. That's an awesome addition for the uh, studio. I love having remnants of the people, people that yeah. have been in here because it makes it more fun for well, this kind of stuff. Well, I thought I couldn't come on my second time and not bring a present, so... Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so this year, um, I I hope the competition is like super tight. I hope that the judges have to like really mm. decide if it was you that wins this. You know, if you do, because assuming you do the exact same thing as last year, you know, you don't stuff it into the wall. It doesn't, you know, let the ghost out, as they say. Mm. I hope that it's like tight enough where everybody's like, oh, did he win type of thing? And I think you hope that too. Obviously, oh, yeah. everybody hopes they unanimously win, but like mm. also for someone that loves the sport, in a way, that's not good. Yeah, it's 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 not. But when it's deserved, it's deserved. Of course. So I look like I can tell how like I can tell look at someone's car and look at it pretty much and go, that'll be alright. Or he needs to change some things. Mm-hmm. On my personal opinion of stuff, but the way they're moving and the guys that have been messaging and helping out on the off season, you know, with tips and tricks. And it's like, this is going to help these dudes get to another level. But I still think apart from maybe Garrett's car and, and killer B James is the one James drives, uh, the Adam Kelly, he's got some pretty good stuff. They're sort of the, the pinnacle now for the American guys. And, uh, if I make a mistake, those guys are right there. Um, I watch the good thing. Another good thing about the, the way that they operate here is they release the points. So my pro burnout points from memory were pretty high. Um, and second place was a good like 100 points behind. So mm-hmm. um, that's a fair gap, but it's not unwarranted. You know, I sort of felt like... So what like, were the points? How did they do the points numbers? Uh, well, they have judging criteria. So what, what was like the max points you could get? I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> okay. I just knew I had a say I had three hundred and something. That's and where like, yeah, because you said three hundred, like, and I'm like, how are they judging this? What, yeah, it was like I, a thousand points. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it, it might have been because it was over three hundred. There might have been 
out of but there is a way you could probably work it out and go through all the scores mm-hmm. and it probably tells you what it's out of um maybe it was out of 350 or 330 i don't know but it's uh it was pretty well and i felt like the points compared to my rivals run where i made a mistake they were lower so they'd picked up on that which excites me because it goes the guys that were judging they knew exactly yeah. what they're doing um, and they're just they're just they're probably you know trying to get up to speed with how they judge burnouts as well but that gave me confidence saying hey they saw me do that and they picked up on it which is great because they they're paying attention and, and it reflected in the points so that that actually excited me yeah well my buddy uh, Mike Massey was judging last year and he does a lot of drifting mm. so it seemed like a good fit to have somebody that drifts yeah. come in because they can pick up on like a bobble or yeah. like something yeah. that wasn't purposely done pretty yeah. pretty quickly like yeah you know a drag racer isn't gonna really pick <laughs> up on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. Like uh, spinning the tires is wrong. So it's like. Yeah, I saw a comment, uh, a couple of people actually, because when I did the tip in, it overshot and I felt the car like, okay, geez, that wall will be close. And I hit the brakes and I felt the car just continue to slide. Um, and it sort of stopped at the wall and Garrett was right there, like cheering. And people were like, oh, he's just stopped in front of Garrett and looked him in the eyes. He's so cold. Like, <laughs> I was like, that definitely wasn't on purpose, you know? And, and it was cool that, like, but yeah, I was like, well, that's a mistake. So they yeah. definitely caught it, and I'm glad they did. Yeah, because you have to catch those kind of things, or else the kind of the they're just, they're just days, and they sense. go, "This Australian's here, and he's just done noise and smoke and burnouts, and give him all the points." Like that's not the case. So that's yeah, yeah, because it's easy to just be like, "Oh, it was loud." Yeah, <laughs> it was loud and yeah. smoky. Mm. And we even talked about how you know, trying to give some of these guys advice when there's this balance of like. I want it to be a show for the fans or you want it to be a show for the judges. Yeah. Because you play to the judges. The fans, that mm. reaction's cool, mm. but that doesn't give you a trophy. That's right. That's the fine line. So <sighs> the fans could hate you and you could still win every yeah. <laughs> every deal. That's kind of the so, weird side of it. So George... Uh, What's his nickname? LS? Is it LS George? LS George. LS George, right? He had twin turbos. Everything I said is bad about a burnout <laughs> car. Dude was like driving around in the sun. He had a mini version of sun in his engine bay and it was blowing flames and that was cool. And everything it, melted. Everything melted and it was like just so many bad things happened. But it looked cool and it went all right. And the fans love it. They love fire. They love carnage. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing about burnouts is people love to see carnage. It's, it doesn't matter what sport you're in. Yeah. As drivers and car owners, we don't want carnage. We don't want us, you know, if you're drag racing, you don't want the shoots to fail and you go for a free trip through the paddock. Like, but fans are like, oh, it's exciting. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's just how they look at it. So for them, they're like, oh, George is, you know, that's crazy. But when it comes back to how the sport's judged, you know, it's not really going to be great for you, certain things you do. So you have to make a decision whether you're the people's champ or the champ. Like, there's, it's hard to cross that over um, until. The Burnout Masters final this year at Summer Nats. Now, now there's going to be a People's Champ and a Champ? No, there's going to be a, the People's Champ one. Oh. The People's Champ, Lynchy. Oh, okay. So and I, got, I thought there was going to be like, you know, two, because that almost would make sense too, is like, you know, a crowd winner and then like a judged winner, like two different people. Yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. Could be kind of an interesting Well, they deal. do give out trophies for that crowd favorite. Okay. So I've won a bunch. At uh, Summer Nats and other events nah, in not, Australia? No, not that one, like Power Cruise. Okay. So Power Cruise, I've won a couple of crowd favorites. And, um, yeah, just other events. Normally, other, like different events do different kinds of trophies. So you got, like, Lord of the Revs. Mm-hmm. you got Best Tip In, um, you know, the Burnout Masters final. They normally just... It's just winner, second, third. Like, that's it. Yeah. So. And like you said, the man himself... The people's champ. People's champ. So Lynchy. Lynchy. Uh, normally he was pull it through. He was a party guy. Went out there a million miles an hour, limited bashed. You know, just did it for the love of two doing wheels. It out. Yeah, just whatever went. I mean, I've I feel like I've seen that car up on two wheels. Ah, uh, man. Like kind of. I've seen some burnout cars come around so fast that they do end up on the two wheels for a quick second. Uh there's got that mini. It's called Tub Shop because it's so small. It just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy footage of some of those cars going to. My car lifts a wheel every now and again, so it's not fun. You don't three, want that. Three wheeling. Three wheeling, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have seen it lift two, but it wasn't at the same time. It was like one and then sort of, yeah. But. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that was that was pretty cool to see Lynchy win. I know he's won quite a few, but it was the best thing best thing for the sport. Yeah, yeah, because he and not only did he win it because he was the people's champ, he changed his driving style. So last time I was on your show and I got tagged in this a lot of times and people made memes of it. Is I said you'd be struggling to win summon outs with a with a, a naturally aspirated LS. Even Lynchy made a video on tag minute. Mech Minute, Lynchy wins some of that, but he is a special breed, and I, and I did say struggling. He had to work for it, uh, and he is honestly one of the best drivers yeah. I've ever seen. I saw that clip going around, and I was actually thinking because like it had good views and stuff, and I was like, I was like, that's great, like <laughs> yeah. that's great for the sport. Like people yeah. are talking about, yeah. you know, yeah, the struggle of winning mm. NA or any time that there's some like even in drag racing, any time there's like a rivalry or some shit talking or like a yeah. nitrous car can't win like mm. that kind of stuff's always good i, I don't yeah. know if anybody does burn out some nitrous cars but uh they've been done not com not like competitively it's just yeah because like lynch you could just put nitrous on his car and suddenly it'd be like a blower <laughs> yeah. power wise <laughs> yeah it just wouldn't be the sound yeah it and, probably uh, wouldn't last two minutes or a minute and a half whatever yeah probably not <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, effectively anyway yeah, uh, what do you, what does he run for fuel in NA? Methanol. Methanol still. I didn't know if he it runs methanol. Yeah, basically just for the cooling properties. I didn't know if like maybe Q16 or something like gasoline based. Oh, we don't get a lot of random stuff in Australia. We get like standard methanol, 98, 95, 91, E10, E85. That's it. Uh, so methanol is pretty much the go-to then. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get like the you've had like C whatever it is C16 or 10 mm -hmm. like all these random fuels. We don't get that. Yeah, we got M5, which is methanol with a little bit of nitromethane. Yeah, is, yeah, we don't get that. Yeah, it's really yeah. serious. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. you put a splash of nitromethane <laughs> in your car and yeah. it's, uh, it's picking up a lot of power. Yeah, we don't get that. And the flames are pretty cool. We too. could probably get it, but it costs you like three grand. Or so if it's $200 for a drum here, it's $800 for the certain drums in Australia. Like Australia's really – because stuff gets made in America, to get it to Australia is mm -hmm. a lot of money, so – has our exchange rate gotten worse for you guys? I think it's actually got a little bit better. Or it's yeah. about the same. I don't, I don't know, know what it's at since you were last year. I think it was 64 last time I was here. It's 65 now. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there. it's disgusting. On your way up. <laughs> it's like, every, I'm like, I transferred because I got a travel card and I transferred 10 grand or something just to like have money on the card. And when it gets low, I'll just transfer more. And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of Australian turning into not much American. So well, you went to Disney and that'll take it all. Yeah. Well, that took a lot. And uh, the, the, I messed up when I went to Disney. I gave them my wife my Amex and she booked everything. And, dude, we had so much stuff. I, that was a mistake. I know for next time. Disney, you know, Walt Disney World's is we drain wallets. Yeah. That's their whole goal. Is they're really good at separating people mm. from the money that they came with. Yeah, yeah, and and hey, man, the kids, it's it's not like you got you live quite close, but it's because it's, you know, something weird for me. I was happy to go and kids whatever they want to do, I let them do yeah. because it's it's a one off. But it might not be a one off. But yeah, that's the thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. So, you touched on it a little bit. How many cars are on their way over right now? Ooh, what do we got? Well, one of them's a top fuel car we gave to Garrett. Yeah, two seater, yeah. top fuel. Somebody was like, "Will you ride in that?" I was like, "No, <laughs> no shot." <laughs> uh, I I don't think it'd be that bad. I I couldn't go down the track like that and not be steering or brakes or gas or anything. Right, I if, just don't think I could handle. If Clay was driving it or someone that knows what they're maybe. doing, you know, just a free ride in a top fuel car, it just feel weird. Let's face it, you're never gonna drive a top fuel car. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Next minute there'll be a meme, you're driving a top fuel car. Um, no, unlikely. Majority of people are not going to drive a top, like 99.999% of people aren't going to drive a top fuel car. But if you have the option to go on a top fuel car as a passenger, dude, that's a, like a once in a lifetime thing. It's crazy. Imagine sure. the potential for Garrett to like we give people rides is like, it's like you're like Santa. He can literally be Santa now for a lot of people. So that was the thinking behind it. But and that's a front back deal right so the the story behind the car is the car won i'm pretty sure and don't quote me on this because i should have checked but i'm pretty sure the car won a championship in australia and uh got from power cruise which is making a lot of this stuff happen all the guys come over he's helping out um bought the car and sent it to a guy that builds top fuel cars so he 
took this championship winning car he bought at the track or near the track, I believe, like it won the, might have won the championship. And he's like, here's the cash. I'm taking the car sort of deal. And then he took it to a uh, guy that builds frames and chassis. And he said, put a seat in it. And the dude put a seat in it. And uh, he took it to Power Cruise and you could win a ride in this car at Power Cruise, which was doing power skids on top fuel slicks down the racetrack, like madness. Yeah, that's uh, it. But it's the uh, front and back, right? Yeah, like somebody sits behind. Uh, I think the driver sits. Not side by side. No, no, it's front and back. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's one in America that's like a driver and then two passengers, I think, behind them, like, yeah, on, yeah. like over either shoulder. Yeah, no. Nah. Which is a little funky, too. No, this is this is like as standard looking as it gets with just another seat. So I'll be interested to see if that'll work with people being able to do ride-alongs because it's a bit of a liability. Well, we're in the country of liability doesn't really matter. You That's know? true. So if it worked in Australia for a period of time, it has to work here. The car's built professionally. The car is legit. Like it's very you know, safe is what a top fuel car can be. Mm -hmm. You don't have to run down at 10,000 horsepower. Tune it to 7,000. No one's going to know the difference. Yeah, put maybe a couple of tenths a second. No, you still run nitro, but just maybe not 100%. It yeah. could be alcohol drags or two. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty fast on alcohol. Yeah, Because we have two classes here. You have nitro and then you have alcohol. Mm. Like funny cars, nitro, yeah. Yeah. top level, and then this right above, right below them is like the same car, mm. but just on methanol. Yeah, okay. So cool. it just takes like... You know, five thousand horsepower out yeah. of it, <laughs> and some. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's probably cost half as much to run. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> probably a tenth of the price, I'd say, if you're not going through pistons and everything so quickly. Yeah, the cost of pulling engines is probably. <laughs> it's like my burner engine. Get you know, if I was running that on nitro, geez, you would get one burner and have to rebuild it. So yeah, yeah I got the nitro piston right there. Yep, <laughs> that's, just, that's ran. Yeah, right. It doesn't even look like anybody's touched it. We've got the, are they um, uh, anodized, are they? I don't know. Or I clay. think it's some kind of coating they put on there, but, yeah, like it doesn't look like they used it. But that'll be interesting to see. So what else is on its way over? So there's a top fuel car. Top fuel car. There is another top secret car we're building here in America. Okay. So we were going to build another car. Gup's going to build a car. It's a Holden Ute. So the, the idea behind this Holden U is people can drive this car, and it's going to be built to the specs of my car. You uh, guys love liability. <laughs> well, it'd be chosen. So, um, you know, I don't yeah. know if Jeff, Jeff Lutz is going to be involved in it somehow, and he might drive yeah, around. Cool. Um, you know, if Jeff can't make it for whatever reason, there might be another dude that steps in. You know, how you, 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 I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of what he's thinking in his head, but... It's more like give some people some opportunities to, you know, do some cool stuff what we're doing. Oh, you meant like, you know, guy in the crowd. No. Hop on no. in there. I was no. like, you guys. <laughs> no. You can't give a kind of crowd a, those kind That's of That's what I thought you kind of implied there. Yeah. I was like, you. Yeah. No. It, it's, it's professionals. So racing yeah. professionals, you know, drag races that they understand cars. They know what the dangers are. You have to own your own fire suit and helmet at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bare, like that kind yeah. of level of research. Yeah, yeah, you like, have to have a tow to home. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so we got that. Uh, Top secret car. Yeah, and actually he was looking for someone to build it. So I think some of the Skids for Kids guys, might one of their shops is going to build, help build this. We'll give the fabricator we're bringing over space to build it. Okay. So uh, last time I heard they were trying to get an engine – uh, engine in America. We weren't even bringing an engine over for it, so they're going to probably do something up there. Um, hmm. We've The first container is Lynchy is Skidma, the loudest car. Like, you think my car's loud? It was louder than the Mon It was the loudest car at Cleaderson Cars. Mm -hmm. Wait till you hear Skidma. Your eardrums will be just left the chat. Is it like a big block? Why is it so loud? It's a small block. Uh, I don't know why it's so loud. I hmm. just, I, I don't know. It's just loud. <laughs> It's like you sit in a grandstand and you hold, you know when the top fuel is going, your body vibrates? It's sort of like that. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's it sucks when you forget it's behind you and, yeah. Uh, we've got Imposter, another top 10 sort of car in Australia. Um, we've got, well, Skidman is another top 10 car. We've got a guy called Paddy. Now, Paddy... When Gup announced bringing cars over to America to do some stuff, we had a lot of people apply. And I got a list of about 30, 40 cars of people that were going to come to America and do what we're doing. And I had to shortlist these people. 
And I put Paddy on the short list and I thought, you know what, if he wants to do this, it'd be a nice different car. He's not necessarily a burnout guy. And we're not necessarily here just to do burnouts. We want to do a bit of everything. So what I'm what I like to do, and I probably explained this last time, is the the show, you know, the big show and the and the demonstrations and stuff like that. So Paddy is a is a VL Commodore. You probably might have seen a few down at Canberra when you went there. And uh, basically he is just a bit of a different dynamic to a straight burnout car. It's a really mm-hmm. nice car. So So what are most of these then? So Lynchy, what is that? A Corolla? Yep. Um the Skidma is a Sigma, Mitsubishi Sigma. I don't Mitch. believe <laughs> Mitsubishi. Uh, yeah, I, so they make air cons. Close my eyes, I can't picture <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> so they make great air cons, Mitsubishi. Yeah. Uh, cars, maybe not, but it's... Like don't, vacuum cleaners maybe yeah, too. No, <laughs> it's a really weird car to use, but he's got okay. a Mitsubishi Sigma and it's got a hell of an engine in it. Some and, guy uh, from Thailand's like, how do you not know what a Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was born in the back of a Sigma. That's I, probably where mostly they are. And, and don't hate me, guys, but it reminds me of a Fox Body Mustang, like the old square ones. Mm-hmm. When you see it, you might punch me and go, oh, I know what you mean, because I know they're a bit of a cult thing here. Yeah. But that's sort of, I look at it and go, oh, it looks like a Fox body. But Are anyway. they a four-door? Yeah. I may have seen one then, mm. because I, I saw a car and I was like, wait, is that a four-door Fox body mm. when I was in Australia? Could have been, yeah. 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 Was okay. It? Yeah. They're not real common. I haven't seen one on the road, ever. Huh. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to look through my photos. I, I've seen, like, one, and it's Skidma. So, okay. Um, so that's that. Imposter is a Commodore Ute, VF sort of looking Commodore Ute, mm-hmm. pretty standard, stock standard thing for Australia. Commodores are the ones that came LS, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Not the Ford version. No, no. So, Commodores are Holden, yeah. Chev, Holden, Chev. They're a Chevy Ute, basically. Okay. Um, but you didn't get a lot of Commodore. You didn't get any. Well, you got a couple, but they weren't called Commodore. Yeah. We didn't get the Ute version either. We got them as GTOs. Yep. And mm. they're not good. No. <laughs> well, they could be good. You just got to change it. Yeah, you got to give them some love. Yeah, well, the problem is they came with a trunk. They should have came with a pickup truck bed. Yeah, you didn't get the ute here. No, that or was our truck or whatever you call it. Yep. Um, but, the, you know, the, that, the other version was okay. Like my mate Jose from the Bay and kelly has got like a drift GTO. Mm-hmm. It's a really nice car. Well, you had them four-door also. We got four-door, two-doors, yep. Yeah, that's weird. We only mm. got the two-doors and we only got like two years of them Mm. and all of the wiring was bad yeah they all had wiring issues they were pontiacs weren't they yeah yeah see and pontiac doesn't exist anymore no they're like not our problem yeah Yeah. they're done they got rid of pontiac altogether gm was like you're yeah (laughs) yeah we're done with this project yeah so there's that and then there's the last one was the vl so the vl is a holden again it's like a 1987 model really Mm. it's like a Cult car, a cult following car in Australia, like a Fox body, a VLs are similar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, flatbeds, or are they all? Do they have the flatbed trucks like yours? Because I know some of the Utes people would put the no. flatbeds on them, right? No, no, nothing has a flatbed. It's all the bedsides. So they're called style sides in Australia. Yeah. So style only sides. the one Ute. Okay. The rest of them are sedans. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're unibody type of deals, yep. not truck chassis. Mm. Okay. Trying to just grasp it all as an American. My American mind can't. I'm the, yeah. <laughs> I'm, the only, I'm the only Australian with a truck with a uh, flatbed, mate. Mm-hmm. There's a couple uh, that I saw when I was there, like yeah. the Utes, yeah. but they also had flatbeds on them. Yeah, you can but buy them the on older each ones, I Yeah, think. older ones are more common. Like the 80s. Ones. The new models, they like to have style sides on them. Like yeah. You could take that off and put a tray on them from factory. But style sides. No one ever did that, yeah. And trays. Yeah. Trying to get all the... Tray is like this. Yep. So my Ute has a tray. My yep. Ute, not a truck. As a tray, and this is pretty much what it looks like. Um, if it's a two door, it might not be a truck, it might be a ute, like your ute. <laughs> They're all utes, it's a two door, <laughs> you know. Utes. Like my truck is clearly a truck, it's a ute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on my side of the on my side of the world, it's a ute. So, yeah. so you ordered a, a truck, and that's that's I, still a ute. If I ordered a truck, it's a semi. Trucks are, I'm only strictly speaking from an Australian point of view. Your ute is a ute. It's not a truck until it's got a road range gearbox or a big towing a, a lorry. Set it's 8,000 pounds. It doesn't matter. It's still a ute. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Weight doesn't matter. 3,500 Ram, big Ram, big Julie's on the back. Still yeah. a ute. You see, yeah. I figured it'd be like unibody is a ute. Frame maybe as a truck, mm. you know, like those new Honda. Um, so what do you call trucks here? 
Sorry. Like a semi truck? Yeah. Like, yeah, like a semi truck or like an 18 wheeler. So be, there's no abbreviated short name for it? I mean, semi, but that's kind of odd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But see, the interesting part is the truck after it. So we just call it Australians short and everything. So semi truck, semi truck. You know, there is actually confusion there, though. Like, yeah. you will be like, oh, there's a truck coming. And it still could be, you know, a Walmart big ass <laughs> truck. Yeah. Or it could be my truck coming. Or it could be, you know, a Honda, like, Ridgeline. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the biggest confusion, which I, I got myself again today, uh, biggest confusion for an Australian coming here is chips and fries. Today I ordered some chips, right? I just felt like some chips, some nice chips, a bit of ketchup, you know what I mean, at the farm, looking at the animals. And then I waited for five minutes and they gave me a packet of crisps. In Australia, that's not okay. That Chips are like French fries. Yeah, but they're fried. They're fries. I know, but we call them all, we call them chips. We call the other ones chips too, but you don't go and order. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in, um, I don't know when it was, 2011, or something, maybe 10, the US had a conflict with France. Yeah. So there was a movement to not call it French toast anymore, mm -hmm. call it freedom toast, and not call it French fries anymore, yeah, call right. it freedom fries. <laughs> Never caught on, unfortunately. No, I don't think, I think you'd be struggling there. <laughs> <laughs> but dropping the France, <laughs> French was yeah. pretty funny uh, mm -hmm. concept. But that's where that, I think that's, most of that stuff seems to come from like Europe and yeah. Britain because, mm. you know, my mother-in-law is British. So she yeah. does that same type of stuff that Australians do. And they're on the other side of the world from each other. Well, we are a British uh, colony, I suppose. Yeah, colonized. <laughs> well, I mean, at some way, point in time, we'd, we'd all come from that side of the world. So, well, came from there or were forced there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Sent there, I yeah, guess you could sent say. There against their will. Hey, it was let's send all the prisoners to a tropical island on the other side of the world. Okay. <laughs> a continent. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't no even like, yeah. it's a pretty big island to yeah. be like, yeah, that it's it's useless. Just yeah. send some people there. I think there's some aboriginals there. Yeah, <laughs> they won't even like it there. They'll have a terrible time. Yeah. <laughs> Drop them off in Sydney. Look <laughs> yeah. at how terrible this place is, <laughs> yeah. this bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems like a lot of work to drop your prisoners somewhere. Well, they must have a lot of prisoners to drop them half or sail them back in the day, halfway around the world. That's a long trip just to bring that some prisoners. Like a good six months, I'd say, back in the day, yeah. Right? Like, there's got to be somewhere closer. 50-50 chance if your boat even makes it this far. Like, yeah. If anything, I'd send them like to Greenland or something. It's right Somewhere there. Cold. And it's like <laughs> yeah. cold. Yeah. Hey, yeah. That'd be where I wouldn't want to go. Well, they reckon <laughs> send them far away enough where they can't come back. So. Yeah. I wonder, did New Zealand get the same treatment? Because, you know, at least if you got dropped in New Zealand, there's no things trying to kill you all the time. Isn't that the flip side? Is like I'm not New sure Zealand if they knew that back then. Has nothing trying to kill oh, you? Oh, New Zealand doesn't have snakes or anything. It's just. Um, Australia has everything trying to kill you. And well, I read a stat the other day. 23 out of the top 25 po most poisonous snakes in the world are in Australia. Hmm. So I think you guys might have one of the yeah. top 25 or something. We got the copperhead. We have a, a good amount of constricting snakes, like some... Like, yeah, yeah. Like they'll go into the Everglades there. and get like a 25-foot snake out of there. Mm. Yeah, so that's like the get-your-dog type of snake. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's... Not the uh, step-on and, oh, shit... You this did. is my time. <laughs> well, there was a story before I left. Uh, a guy, there was a, a brown snake in a kindergarten, and a guy, the toddlers were all around, and the snake was going nuts, and the guy picked it up, got it out of the kindy, out of the preschool, whatever you call it here. Babies in there, you know. And uh, he passed away. So mm -hmm. he saved the whole kindy. So, wow. So he, he got bitten by this brown snake, got it out, of, got all the kids away from danger. And uh, that would that cost him his life. So, holy cow! Real hero. That's how serious these snakes are, man. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, that's a terrifying situation. I mean, we just have gators, but I was just talking about this to my dad. I was like, I have more worry of a venomous snake than I do of a gator because, like, mm. you know, a gator could bite you, and like, yeah, it may get a limb or something, <laughs> yeah. but like, yeah, it's not guaranteed death. Mm. You get a snake and it's like, oh, shit, like, I hope they have the antivenom somewhere, maybe. And you got to know what it was and 
go to the right spot. Yeah, I've watched too much snakes on a plane. Yeah, and that's not, yeah. <laughs> too much Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That'll scare anyone. <laughs> so back to cars coming over. So there's four cars we just talked about. Yep. And is that's the first shipment. That's the first container, yep. And they're coming over for uh, power crews up in Michigan, uh, primarily. Uh, well, the first event, so part of the deal, once again, same with myself, is, uh, you know, Gubs invested some money to help us get over here. And for us to repay that, we need to show up to one of his events and, you know, just, and which we would anyway. It's just to say thanks and, you know, the people that go and watch Power Crews, they can watch us do our thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't care what we do in between that. So in between Power Crews, we've got free reign to do whatever we want, which involves Garrett's events, which involves SEMA, like anything we can find and do, yeah. like we can do. There's no problems. So Okay. So hopefully there's some good events then. Yeah. And hopefully it, these guys are, you know, motivated enough to do the travel that you do because once you're in the US, mm. you're still <laughs> you're not quite where you need to be. <laughs> Never where you need to be. <laughs> yeah, like you know, you um, I don't know if they understand, like, they may not grasp that concept, but if you, you know, you know, if you're at SEMA, you're not near <laughs> Cletus and Cars. No, no. So my, my schedule coming up is pretty full on. Like, it would make you, like, it's just, it's terrible. Uh, it's a lot of driving. So it's hard to, with the family this time, it's like, you sort of can't drive how you want because you, like, got to stop for, like, lunch and toilet breaks and... Even though there's a toilet on the RV, it's just, it just slows you down. Yeah. When it's the boys, it's like, right, I'm tired, I can't drive anymore. Someone else jumps in and starts driving, and we, we just make good time. And you stop for fuel, you know, like it's uh it's easy. But family's a different vibe. But these guys are all buying, they've all got or buying RVs. They've all got trailers like me. We are going to be a set of Australian lunatics with burnout cars driving around the country in a, in a, in a like a brigade of RVs. So if you're along driving on the highway and you see like eight or nine RVs in a line with trailers, you know what's going down. Yeah, a bunch of bunch of lunatic Australian guys, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, bouncing back and forth between the lanes. Maybe drive on the wrong side of the road here and there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah. accidentally take a right hand turn where they should have been. <laughs> you know, talking about I did that the other day. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't thinking what I was doing. Um, yeah. But yeah, having too many schooners at 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 the bar at lunch might accidentally pull on the wrong side of the road but um it's an adventure man it's uh it really is yeah i'm excited for them to uh come and experience it as well i think lynchy at the freedom factory is a pretty big it's a pretty big like title i guess you could say like uh so lynchy's basically winning um the burnout masters finale end of last year that pretty much makes him the best quoted the probably the best guy in the world right now yeah. um we've had some conversations that he's going to come and try and take my evil trophies i said it's not happening uh so we have a lot of good banter you know what i mean we're sort of i was at i was there when he won and um i said you know what has to happen now and he goes i do he goes i'm coming to america and i'm going to try and take you i'm, I'm going to win me some eagles and i said yeah i'm not sure if they give him out for second place. It's just banter, right? And, and yeah. uh, so it, it's you'll see me and him go, it'll be sheep stations. So. Well, if you weren't here, he wouldn't come. No, absolutely not. So none of know, these guys. Are this is the yeah. fire to to make yeah. burnouts really multi-continental. And this is my plan. This is my whole idea. If I go and show these guys what it's all about, the guys that want to have a good time and, you know, it's burnouts in Australia is... It's so politician, like there's a lot of politics to it and it's like it's not really like a fun time most of the time. It's so serious and mm -hmm. like for me, I just wanted to have a good time and travel the country and I love America. It's a great country and I want to see America. Why not do that and do burnouts at the same time and then help you guys grow your spot, sport to where it's like where it's going now. I can go, you look at the uh, new promotion with the burnout wars, hey, I can do another thing in between all these other events that's going on. It's a way, you know, just do more burnouts. And yeah. the more events that pop up, the better for the sport because it gives people options, more people get involved. You know, people level up their game because they want to do better at all these events. So mate, the impact, I think, of you know, I think the, it's going in the right direction and I definitely believe that 
even the Aussie guys have sat back and watched what we did last year and they're like, oh, this is legit. And I can definitely see, see at least 20 cars, uh, including the eight that are coming. I can definitely see about 20 cars next before next year coming here. Wow. And that's a big chunk of most of them are some of the best guys in the world. I was going to say on the flip side of that, does that have promoters in Australia sweating a little bit? They'd have to, right? You would you would think if uh, you know if you have them. fifty cars, <laughs> fifty of the top car or whatever, forty cars that are like top tier, and twenty of them decide to send their cars on a year long trip, gone possibly longer, possibly longer. Like I think it's you're no guaranteed, free, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're guaranteed a minimum of a year gone. Mm. Yeah. If you're a promoter, you gotta be thinking, how do I keep these guys from leaving? Well, they they did. Keep, try to keep them from leaving. They put the prize money up. Maybe it was too late. Hmm. I don't know. But yeah, hey. so Summer Nights raised prize money fifty grand, mm. and they dropped their previous. Drop, drop, they they dropped the Burnout Masters. Which shout out to Burnout Masters. Now Burnout Masters is concentrating in America. So Burnout Masters have helped, and and when I say concentrating, they don't run events. They're they're an organization that sanction sort of burnout competitions yeah so they've actually put a whole lot of money into the guys coming across from australia they've helped them out with fuel um tires methanol they've given everyone like a good amount of money to help promote burnouts that we're doing here with all the events so you guys might go come over and go oh yeah i'd really like to go to florida to cletus's event but you know it's just a lot of money to get there burnout masters swings and go here here mate here's some money for fuel and tires and you know go out to Florida and put on a good show and burnouts for everyone. That's the kind of stuff you want to see, you know, and that's what they're doing. Yeah. So, mm. Well, that will make it a lot better, of course. Having an organization help can always be the double-edged sword because, you know, organizations yeah. are ran by people and most people yeah. don't always agree on things, but <laughs> <laughs> they help with, you know, kind of making it streamline, especially yeah. with rules. And, you know, I've often thought about rules, safety, kind of tech is mm. all important that needs to be, like, somewhat thought about. Yeah. You can't just have anybody with any combination and any tech, mm. you know, go out there because, you know, obviously Summer Nats has had problems with people being caught on fire. Mm. So things like that, yeah. you know, you kind of can guidelines to make it a little yeah. safe and, because and, it and, doesn't... Even though Burnout Masters is not a part of Summer Nights anymore, it's the the safety wouldn't change. It's still they're still going to have really good safety. Yeah, and, they're going to take their structure. I'm yeah, sure they're not going to no. lower their safety standards. No, and and the judges they have there at, at um whatever they've called that whatever they I think pro some pro burnout maybe whatever they call it it doesn't really matter. It's just a rebrand. It's yeah. the same judges. They're some of the best people in the industry. Um, that side of the business is great. You know, I couldn't speak highly enough for the the people under the blanket, like the people that make everything happen. They're great guys. They do everything. Um, I just felt like there was room to move sort of up the top end and they've they've turned around and they've moved it. So, um, you know, kudos to them. But I, as I said, I'm, I'm not trying to make everyone leave and come to America and join me. Like, it's, make your own decision. But I've I think my actions, what I've done, everyone's like, hey, we can do that too. Like, it's not... It's so not, what did Lynchy win last year, money wise? Uh, fifteen. <laughs> He's probably. punching the air right now. Fifteen. Or, <laughs> and then this yeah. year they announced fifty. <laughs> yeah, back pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like come on, guys. Yeah. So, but Lynchy said he um, he's been to America before, and he he doesn't care for like even if the prize money like even if he wasn't going to America, he just wanted to win it, and now he's done it. Yeah. He's sort of. But he was just right there. Like they yeah. were they were a few months away from. Yeah, I think I think the trophy itself. He was the last ever burnout master. It's twenty years that thing's been running. Wow. For twenty years, I've had burnout masters there in Canberra, and it's not dead. I'm assuming they're gonna just move venues. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if it's over. But there's so much history, and Lynchy was the last one to win that at Summer Nats, and that's pretty special and quite fitting for him because he's been around so long and been in the scene for I don't I couldn't even tell you how long he's been around. It's long longer than I can remember. Uh, you know, it's very fitting. So. Yeah, there's a, as I said, there's a bit of stuff going on in the burnout world in Australia at the moment, but um, you know, it doesn't really matter for us. We're here doing doing American burnout, so I feel like you guys have enough people coming over that 
you almost need another event. Like, you guys almost need to put on another event somewhere. Like, you uh, guys almost need to find a... Obviously, Gup, right, Gup? Well, Gup has Packers, but Packers isn't burnout. He almost needs another thing. Like, he almost needs to find something in, like... Like, um, I know LS Fest mm. does a burnout event. Yeah. But they don't really... They don't really have a burnout event. They have one, mm. but they don't. Yeah, so I'm going to Alice first, but I know what you're saying. Have you seen how they do it? <laughs> no. Just, so yeah. it's this huge pad, maybe, you know, like a quarter mile by a quarter mile. Yeah, right. And it's just go on out. <laughs> Open slather. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't really, like, it doesn't have any structure or anything. Yeah. So it's tough because you need the confineness to to do like a burnout, you can't just yeah. have a, a open an parking open lot that's yeah. endless. Well, everyone's a legend on a big pad because there's no walls, there's no. But hey, that's uh, that's there is like humps, like it's almost <laughs> like <laughs> it sounds great. And oh, the judging is one of those kind of odd ones, and I think even the sign up this year was a little odd, where you had to be someone. Sign up no matter what car you had. Well, I, I haven't signed up. I'm uh, sure they'll let you do a burnout. Yeah, well, I was t Weston said that he'll get me in. So that's the last I've heard of it, and I'm just assuming that's going to happen. I'm just going to roll up there, and yeah, hopefully it's all sorted, or I might maybe touch base with Weston before that. But it's, uh, sorry, it's, um, yeah, I, I get, and I said different events, different rules. Like, we're here really just to, join in and have a good time. Like, we don't want to show up and go, oh, you should be doing things this way. This is how we do it in Australia. There's nothing worse than, you know, people coming to things. Like, even in other experiences, they go, oh, back home, this is how we do it. And it's like, well, mate, you're not at home. If you don't like it, you don't have to be here. So That's I'm a true. big one for, like, even at Garrett's events, if, you know, someone, if they say, want to be like Australia, sure, that's cool. But if you don't want to be like Australia, we'll – I'll – do what you want. Like, I don't, we don't have to do it our way. Yeah, that's true. Us Americans can get pretty territorial. Yeah, and and we're, as I said, we don't want to change the way you do things. If you want, but if it you needs want to be help. changed. From well. my perspective, <laughs> a lot of it yeah. does need to be changed. Yeah, you know, because some people are just doing these like fugazi burnouts where it's like, <laughs> come on, dude, that's well, not part of the sport. <laughs> sometimes I don't know. A lot of people like they don't really. Un You've been to big events in Australia, so you know. But a lot of people don't know how we do it. So they but see it's already shown. Yeah, he has. And it's but with a full crowd. Yeah, but it's one car, two cars, you know, three cars maybe, but no, it's but like, like the structure. Oh, the structure. The yeah. structure. Like you know, yeah. not even like the burnout cars, but the structure of the way that they mm. do the event. Not like because mm. you can't control what cars show up, but you can control yeah, how the pad is, mm. the, the the safety, the rules, yeah. like the judging. But, but it's hard to. Uh, this is the hard part, right? You you can put a summon that's pad in there, and if you haven't got our level cars, it's sort of a bit boring. You know, not boring, but people go, oh yeah, it was all right. Yeah, because they're really set up for technical, and technical normally means slow, and a new person to burnouts, unless you got a thousand horsepower. And you, only, you know, it's not really exciting on a small pad. At least on a bigger pad, these these things get a bit of a run up, and they're moving yeah. around fast, and they're tagging walls at speed, not just bumper fenders here and there. You know, so it's just hard to pick it. But as I said the the bigger cars coming over will make these shows the dynamic of it totally different. People will be like, I didn't like burnouts, but now I love burnouts because the yeah, you really start to see the competition really get into it. So if anyone's out there listening from some of these companies, Holly, you know, I'm sure all of these guys would happily accept an appearance fee. <laughs> so <laughs> Holly, I uh, definitely want to come to LS Fest. Yes, so, uh, <laughs> happily accept an appearance fee. Any, actually, I mean, I've, I'm sure I've been talking to a guy from Holly, so I've, I, I haven't mentioned it, but I do have his contact. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. But a lot of them would be, you know, it'd be reasonable for them to pay an appearance fee to get you mm. and any of these Australian yeah. cars in the gates because it's it's well, good for events to have. Yeah, and, stuff. and, and it, while we're on this platform, if anyone has an event that they think they want to see these Australian cars come to, please reach out to me and 
we're, we're keen as to to do a bit of everything. So what's your preferred way? Like Instagram, DM, Facebook? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Instagram's my most active social media. Yeah. So Lux so is a car. Somebody DMs you on there. Yeah, yeah. I'd hopefully see it. Mm-hmm. Get a lot of, I don't know why I get a lot of spam lately. I get like twenty spams a day, and people message me, and it just disappears. So. We all get that. Yeah. I, I try for. I mean, we talk on Facebook just because it's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always try for that because it's a only reliable it's easy, platform. Yeah. Yeah. But for new people, um, Instagram is definitely my way. Yeah. So any of you guys that have yeah. an event out there that you're trying to get over the top a little bit, you know, you don't have to advertise that he's in the contest because that may ruin the contest. But if you pay him to come, <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to worry compete. about yeah, yeah. being in the contest. Yeah, you know, it kind of works that way a little yeah. bit. Because I can see how like a smaller event that's not like Garrett's, mm. if you showed up, suddenly people are a bit, a bit, a bit disheartened. Yeah, because mm. the level, you know, you'd be like four steps ahead of most every car that shows up at like a small level burnout contest. Yeah. But we're just looking, like for us, it's just something to do. Mm-hmm. So, but as I said, man, we're open to anything. We'll be here, there, and everywhere. And if someone's going to let us do a burnout, we're going to do burnouts. Heck, if you show up to Walmart and they're like, hey, I'm the manager of Walmart and that section over in the corner, <laughs> that's all yours. Guess what? You're going to have black marks there for the a while. The tire section over there. Because <laughs> we're going to hoist an Australian flag up and just let loose on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So there's one early container and then there's more coming down the yep. pipeline there's a couple more cars two of them uh that i know two or three a couple of guys more guys um these guys are paid their own way so this is probably a first on a podcast we haven't made this really public but here we are no uh, time like so the, the guys from australia have basically reached out and we've worked them out i think it's somewhere in the ten thousand dollars so $10,000, get some all sorted paperwork all ready to go, picked up in Australia, anywhere in Australia, because Gup owns a massive transport company that drives around all the east and west coast. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, picks up their car, drops it to Brisbane. I would prep their car, help them with paperwork, do all the stuff, puts it in a container, gets it landed in America for 10 grand Aussie, which is about 6,000 US. That's super reasonable very reasonable and that yeah. so you guys have kind of since last year you've become the expert at getting cars un- to un- the u.s in a way <laughs> yeah i've unfortunately been tarred with the brush of i had to help all this happen because i had free time not that i had free time i was busy but gump sort of gave me that job because i've dealt with it before and yeah we just because the guys it's like when i flew over no one really helped me i had to figure it out and there's a thousand things going on in your head you just didn't know where to turn, and yeah. now I'm that guy that helps them, knows, tells them where to turn. So, yeah, that barrier of entry is tough yeah. to get past. So and if you make it easy enough, and it's just a money thing. Yeah, and it's just, and it's not a lot of money. Like you spend ten grand on going to a regional event. You know, like I'm granted you're gonna spend more by the time you fly over here, but the reward of getting coming to America, like me, it's fascinating to know I'll be in a different country, experiencing different, you know, um, you know, experiences with different nationalities and all the stuff, like not Australians, you know, and it's just mm-hmm. like it was so exciting to do that. And, mate, I, I haven't got a bad thing to say about it, you know. It's just been awesome. And then you throw in all these big events, like even Garrett's, and then you got the Seamers and the, all these massive big American things. It is just so refreshing as an Aussie to come over here and just experience it. Well, do you guys plan on, you know, because everybody having an RV and a trailer almost isn't necessary. You could just rent somebody with a transport like Garrett does with all of his Crown Vicks and the burnout cars and just put five cars on one transport. You could, and we tr- we spoke about this in depth. So basically, when Maybe we're here... outdoors, though. Yeah, outdoors is a, is a sad part, but we still got to stay somewhere. So when I bought an RV, I was like, right, I could sp- stay in a motel every night. As long as we don't have a house to go back to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we've got every night, every day, we've got to cart food. We've got to cart all of our stuff, tires, this, that. So an RV makes sense because say you spend 50 to 100 grand on an RV, in two years' time, if you want to go home, it's still worth 50 to 100 grand. Mm-hmm. And you've saved all that. Uh, you've got all your stuff on one spot. You've got all your tools on board. You can go where you want. And... That was the, in the end, it was just made sense. Mm-hmm. RV life. Yeah. Um, yep. RVs are great. I, I mean, love them. Yeah. We have a ton in the US. I don't, 
I didn't really see any in Australia when I was not, there. Not as popular. No. Not like that size either. Not like a no. house like that that has slide outs and everything. No, like massive. Mine's, mine's like a hotel room, dude. It's like it yeah. slides out on both sides. It's yeah. And you get lost too. Like they get to like a million dollars. Like oh. they get like some yeah. of those things. Mine's like, oh. like yeah, mine's like an 09 model or something. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was like pre emissions. Is nice. Yeah, and yeah, it was seventy thousand. And it's turbo diesel. Not, everything works. It's great. It's mm-hmm. comfortable. Aircons are good. Everything's good. Couldn't ask for really anything better. Maybe a little bit better on fuel economy. I don't know, but it's a big thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just it's great. Like pull up at an RV park and. So, oh, yeah. you said you haven't really said that more people are coming over. Here. Do you want to touch on who they are, or uh, you want to keep that private? A few of them are private. Um, cause I, I, I want to give them the opportunity to release this in their own time. Of course. I don't want to come out and say this, 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 and this, and a few of them probably, it's going to upset the apple cart a little bit when they, when the world finds out who they are, but it's, well, not for you guys, you'd be ultra excited, but, um, I just want to give them their own chance. But two I can announce is, uh, you got a guy called Brody. He is brand new built LS, same as my engine in a Caprice and a guy called Mick Hinchy, uh, with clickbait. He's a... Another dude from Sydney, done a bit of, oh, done a bit wagon, of everything. Right? The wagon, the, yep. yeah, the orange wagon. Yep. So yeah. he's the he's the second one in that, and then beautiful yeah. car. That thing's really nice. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Yeah, so I like wagons. <laughs> yeah, I don't like wagons. I I'm a wagon wagons. guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's something about it. Oh, he's done a good job with it. It's yeah. like a minivan. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not a wagon guy, but yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, no, they, they, and the biggest thing is too, because they're traveling with us, we need to make sure they fit in with the group. So we're going to be traveling around as a crew. We want everyone to get along together. If we hit a spot, say like some big YouTuber or some a track goes, hey, come here and do some burnouts. We don't want any conflict of interests or, you know, people not getting along with the crew and starting drama. So... A lot of people, we sort of just didn't reply their emails. Man, so Netflix, what are you guys doing? Are you not following this around as a TV show? Netflix would make this would make an awesome TV show. Yeah, they have the net. They have the NASCAR one. They have the Formula One TV actually, show. They just need the freaking this this would skid be, to survive. <laughs> this would be one of the <laughs> greatest for an American to watch. This would be an un, so exciting because there's going to be some drama. There's skid to be, survive. It's perfect. Skid to survive. Netflix. <laughs> Hit me up on Instagram. I'll even give you my email if you're. <laughs> yeah, they just need a small, mm. you know, small check of ten million dollars in it. <laughs> yeah, but we're we're gonna film a lot of this. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try and make YouTube videos every day, nearly every couple of days of the antics we get up to, what we're doing, and try to give as much back to the audience as we can. Audiences back in Australia and even here, if they if they're interested in watching it, uh, just to keep everyone updated of what, what's going on. Yeah, I'm trying to grow your U.S. audience here. So if you're an American, <laughs> you should be watching some burnout stuff. Yeah. I don't know what the barrier is there, but... <laughs> <sighs> My videos don't seem to go to America for some reason, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking now I'm here and I'm posting regularly in America. Well, I haven't posted since I've been here, but Disneyland, it's my videos aren't really around Disneyland stuff. But yeah, we're going to be posting every day and hopefully that changes. Yeah, I'm sure because you're doing two different events just in Florida. Yeah. So you're doing one on the 4th? 5th. Uh, yeah, the one on the 5th in Orlando and then one yep. on the 6th. So Burnout was on the 5th and then, which unfortunately is the same night as uh, the Freedom 500, but the Freedom 500 sold out. So yep. I don't think they have to worry about that. And then I will get my stuff in the trailer and drive straight back to the Freedom Factory and hit the Burnout Rivals on the 6th. Yeah, so if you see him, <laughs> if you see him at both, you definitely got to come up and say hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're one, of, like, there'll probably be a handful of people that will see both events that will be there in person for yeah. both because it's not far. Well, a lot of people missed out on tickets. Like, the demand for tickets to the Freedom 500 is crazy. People yeah. are, like, trying to pay double and triple. And so maybe they might have to, you know, just either if they're not sitting out the front at the gate listening to it, they'll have to... Uh, Find something to do, I suppose. And that's what I was kind of thinking. So it's not like you're taking anything away. Well, there is a live stream. There's the live stream. Yeah, which um, I must add is one of the best live streams I've ever seen. Yeah. Props to those guys. I don't know if Garrett's involved in that. Well, I suppose he is at some point, uh, for some level, but it is great. I watched it when I got home. They gave me a pass and I rewatched it and I was like, this is, 
next level. Yeah, I don't know if my burnout was just that bad or if they made me look worse <laughs> in the editing, in the editing yeah, room. The editing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was in the editing. Yeah, the live editing. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Chris at Project Prime who films it, I don't know if he, like, digitally took out smoke yeah. mm. or something. but It must have had, like, a cobweb over the lens, and that sort of the focus was off your car. Yeah, you didn't was, really pick up that thick smoke that I was putting out the back. I'm a little pissed about that. <laughs> <laughs> Those spiders, man, you got to watch them. I know, I can't <laughs> believe it. Like, it just, like, it, you know, to me in the car, it felt like a really top <laughs> level. <laughs> no, I I hugged the belt yeah, on you had my some burnout, issues. and then yeah. it had no voltage. So the fuel pump had no fuel pump. So basically the car was dead in the water. And no amount of my left foot and right foot could have really saved that. Saved it, no. Besides me just, I should have just crashed it. And got out and cheered. And just got out and like. Uh, we're moving away from that, remember? Yeah. You just do this. No, but if I just crashed it, I could have at least been like, oh man, like the car had a huge problem and I <laughs> crashed and caught on fire. Like it would have been like a, a good end versus like the bad end of like, ugh. Well, I'd say, you know, you have a chance to redeem yourself, but I see you uh we don't know what you're doing yet. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't done any work on the car since then, and it needs some work. Mm. So I feel like I, I don't feel right taking mm. it out there on, like, not making it right, not making it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, I'll need to work on it to to feel like I should go out and do another. Maybe that's where I'm at. <laughs> Do a test one maybe at some yeah, point. Well, it doesn't even have a – I still haven't even put a belt on it. Well, you guys have those burnouts in intersections over here, don't you? What do they call that? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's when Hellcats – Hellcat owners and people that stole Hellcats, they go to an intersection mm -hmm. and they call them takeovers. Okay. And they and just they do burnouts. do burnouts. Sometimes they'll take down like a telephone pole. Sometimes they'll run over a bystander. And everybody's like, I hate these things. But the best video content comes from them. <laughs> Well, it's like a train wreck, right? You don't want to watch it, but you're going to watch it. Of course. Because you can't look away. Yeah. But this is what I mean. This is why on the off chance of these people doing these legit events gives places for people like this to go. Because when there's nowhere for them to go, this is a problem in Australia. There's nowhere for it. People are doing burnouts on the roads because there's no there's no events. And even if you if you don't have a $100,000 car, you can't even go to like someone else because they just go, we don't want you. you you're not good enough for us. So yeah, they, I've always wondered, in there. why don't they have like a B pit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they have the A pit, but like maybe, you know, somewhere else they could have like Actually, a... Actually, you can probably get into Alice Springs. Like a <laughs> test and tune pit, I guess, Any, where it's yeah. like, you know, you're not in the competition, you didn't qualify, but like, you know, you still get to do something No, nah, because cool. it, it, there's only you so get many Tough cars street, I guess. Take. Yeah, it's, it's... There's no B pits. Yeah, but it could just be like in a different part of the property mm. where like... No. You know, the competition's <laughs> over here, but, like, yeah. if you want to dick around, do you know? Oh, there's probably, like, a car show up the road or something. Who knows? But it's <laughs> – it's they definitely don't cater for any of those guys. So you'd have yeah. to go to different events. Like, power, even power cruises, like, you can't have too much of a shitter at power cruises. It's got to be pretty decent. Uh, but there is definitely events out there, but they're not common. So it's hard. Yeah, that makes street, it tough. The street's mostly your answer. And obviously they don't let stolen cars in, so, you know – uh, <laughs> that would sort of kick out half of the people, I suppose. Yeah, did you guys get Hellcats? No, unfortunately. Oh, well, that's what that's what people use is Hellcats. Okay. Because like Hellcats, they do good man. burnouts yeah. and you can finance them. That's you can't really finance a burnout car. <laughs> you can't finance a blown burnout car. Yeah, yeah sure. but you yeah. can finance a supercharged Hellcat. Mm. And they do pretty good burnouts. Do they okay have, burnouts, yeah. They do, yeah, pretty good. For a factory off yeah, the showroom yeah. floor car, yeah, all things considered, yeah, true, it's not bad. Yeah, seven hundred horsepower, seven oh seven. So they're they're pretty good. Even Parker's done a couple with his, yeah, his brother. Well, we uh, we had Commodores, SS Commodores, same mm -hmm. same stuff. They weren't supercharged like that, but they're like the standard burnout road car. So a couple of them were supercharged, right? Yeah, it's 427 was. I think it's a couple of the club sports might have been supercharged. Yeah, a couple uh, six twos with the LSAs, I but think. But they were sort of out of reach of the general hoon. Yeah. Yeah. They're rare. Yeah, yeah rare and expensive. Kind of keeps it away. But the Hellcats yeah. are so And finance accessible. over in, in Australia is not like America where they're like, yeah, I'll give you anything you want. It's like, you can't afford this, mate. Yeah. You're not getting it. Yeah. For a long time, it was uh, ninja loans in the US. No okay. income, no job. <laughs> How'd they pay him back? 
Just didn't. You just, I figure that out once you get, you know, <laughs> once you get that car, you'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it <laughs> but out. But once right. you get that house, you're good. Like, mm. yeah, that's. Start doing Uber Eats or something. <laughs> in your helicopter. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Spend more on fuel than what you make. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll work out good. Yeah. So when is Power Cruise? Do you have the date on that? That is the, I think, I'm, I'm in Salt Lake City at the Supercross at the 11th, and I think it's the following weekend. So it's like the 17th to the 19th or. Of 16th to the 19th of uh, May. Okay. Yeah, so. there's two. There's one in May and one in July. Mm. So a lot of the Aussies are planning to stay between those dates and do everything in between. So whatever's in between that, uh, the Aussies will try and do. So So we might need to uh, talk to Garrett about adding an event in between there somewhere. Yeah, we will. I'm trying to talk to Garrett about doing it. Like I wanted to sort of persuade him, but... but to an event to do, but I haven't caught up with them yet about it, but definitely room for an event there. Um, yeah. So. I mean, it, it's a kind of a seize the opportunity moment where somebody in, because, you know, Power Cruise is pretty far away, so mm. maybe some track up that Somewhere way or something. Like t- yeah, it, it is far away, and that's the thing. And, and they're not looking for more cars. Pretty sure they sell out of car spots. It's mm. more just put a show on for the people that go there. It's been going for 10 years now. It's quite a good thing. But I think there's a lot of room, you know, somewhere in Texas or, mm-hmm. you know, even down, even on the, the West Coast maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We go all over. Somewhere in Vegas. Vegas is great. Vegas is pretty great. I like Vegas. Yeah. It's hard not to. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people, like, it's my preferred vacation spot because there's everything. There is, yeah. Like, it's everything's right there. Everything's walking and there's everything. Just having a good time. They cater to people spending money pretty well. Like Disneyland. Like an adult's Disneyland. Yeah, but the yeah. food's way better. Yeah. The food in Disney sucks. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, well, I, I went into the princess's lunch, mm. and it was like a lot of, couple hundred dollars per kid or something. And uh, we had Philip Mignon, and it was beautiful. It was the best food I've ever had at a theme park. Really? Like full three-course meal appetizers and, and plus the dessert. It was great. But anyway. At least in the U.S., they don't try to charge you a bunch if you ask for another ketchup packet. Well, drinks, that's another thing that annoys me. I like it, but it annoys me is you buy a Coke and they just come keep keep bringing you more. It's like, dude, I don't want to end up with diabetes. Like, <laughs> stop bringing me full sugar Cokes. Yeah. I don't even drink full sugar Cokes at home, but they don't have Coke Zero here. They have, like, Diet Coke, and it just, mm-hmm. it's disgusting. So I, I treat myself to a full sugar Coke. And then the dude brings another Coke over, and then I'm halfway through it, and he brings another Coke over. And I can't say no because I like Coke, but I'd rather just not have the option. That's I the southern way. I wouldn't walk to the, the thing to get another one. But if he brings it to me, I'm like, oh, another sip, another sip. Yeah. And it's just it, it, it's, it's quite annoying. But the ketchup packets in Australia, they're stingy on those things. Depends where you go. 7-Eleven, they're free. You go to McDonald's and they only wanted to give you like one and you're like, can I have <laughs> one more? <laughs> like, no, <laughs> 25 cents. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Yeah. yeah. They get a little stingy about that. They're pretty stingy on our sauce, mate. Um, have you s- helped uh, send any GTRs over? Because there's a big GTR event uh, that Hawkins, Hawkins event? is doing. Yeah. No, um, I'm supposing Hawkins is all over that. Not really sure. But yeah. um, that could be another option for us doing some stuff with Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, because he's doing GTR Festival, Festival Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas or is it in Dallas? Might be Dallas. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I think it's Dallas, Maybe Texas. Dallas. He did tell me all sorry, about Hawkins. it. Sorry, Hawkins. I was just there. Sorry, Andrew. Um, I'd had about 8 million Jack Daniels when he was telling me about it. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah, Dallas, yeah. But as I said, that could be an option. We could hit that. I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. I think it's just his event that he kind of does in Australia, a yeah. U.S. version of it. Yeah, like kind They of are sending it. cars over. I figured they were. A few a few big builders in Australia are sending cars over for it. I'm pretty excited for that, too. That'll be pretty cool to see. I I, I reckon the Aussies will have his. I know Americans have good cars, but the GDR, like some of the, the, the skylines in Australia are next level. I'll give you that. I will yeah. give you that all day, <laughs> mostly because I do not care about RBs. Mm. They're junk. Yeah. Nissan engines are junk. Yeah. GTRs. Not interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but, you, the Australians can have that all but day. But I know Garrett's like advertising this this all-wheel drive race they're doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying like 
if some of these GDRs turned up to this thing, it'd be like, just give them the money now and put yeah. stuff on the trailer. Like yeah. you're not even competing. I don't know how fast they are, but they don't, I don't think they're that fast. Like as in like, they're like 2000 horsepower all wheel drive. Just. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't have anything to hang with those. Yeah. I think they're, and the, and the money on them is just ridiculous, but it'd be cool to get one of them to one of these gigs and see how they go. But, well, we have a lot of no prep in the U.S. in general. Mm. So, like, not even just Garrett's deal. Like, there's no preps around the country going on right now. All-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive? Or? Some will allow all-wheel drive, especially mm. if it has a clutch. Yeah. You know, okay. you could probably convince them to allow that. Yeah. But when you're putting eight car lengths on in the first 100 yards. <laughs> well, some of the rear-wheel drive yeah, I realize that. cars are pretty stout. But yeah. that would be pretty interesting just to see them mm. be involved. And they're like 20 grand to win shootouts. Yeah, yeah. They're worth traveling to for some of these GTRs. I just figured, you know, he'd be uh, in your ear trying to get some advice on shipping cars over because oh, you guys think, are all shipping from the same yeah. place to the same place. Oh, sort of. It's, I don't think he's really personal, personally shipping for himself. I think it would be guys just... They're yeah. sorting out their own stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's not just them, dude. There's drag cars coming over. There's a couple of Aussies. I've had some calls going, hey, you know, just wanted to find the ins and outs and wanted to try and make some connections. There's a guy that was the fastest car in Australia. Uh, his name's Wade Wagstaff. He hit me up the other day. He wants to bring his 57 Chev back to America. It's a full car, but like it's fast, dude. It mm -hmm. was like, it held the Australian uh, record for like years. Yeah, and he's uh, just, white top car, red. Is it? I think it's got a white roof. It's, yeah, it's called the Grinch right. or Ego Killer. It's called mm. the. It's called Ego Killer. Mm. It's I a. I've seen it. Yeah, okay. it's been to America before. Okay. Yeah, so, so he's um, trying to bring that back over. He just needs someone. He needs to rent a spot to leave all his stuff, but he wants to leave it around Florida. So, obviously, you know, is there someone that like some sort of race shop? But if, if you're hearing this and you got a spot, this dude can pay you. He's uh he's keen as so. Yeah, looking to leave his 57. Well, tow to home, 57. Mm -hmm. The whole, this dude's the ultimate professional in big Noonan engines, like all Shit. the gear. You guys almost need your own freaking boat at this point. We sort of need our own compound. I yeah. think that might be next on the uh, on the agenda. If we get our own compound, then we can start catering for these guys better and have, I don't know, maybe that's next. That would be pretty awesome if there was like a, a Florida hub. But now I feel bad because... No one in the U.S. is talking about sending anything to Australia. You know, I feel like this is a one-way relationship here. Well, it's because this is where it's happening. This is where the motorsport and, and like skids is skids, and skids in Australia won't change. They'll have it buttoned up, and it's cool. Drag racing sort of dying in Australia. Like no one's really interested in it. Hmm. Um, motorsport in general, but. America, they put the effort in, the big events, you got more people, more money, more sponsors, more everything. So if you want to do things on a big level, this is the country you need to be in. So yeah. you don't really want to go and send your stuff to Australia and just, you know, which is kind of sad, but, you know, I, I don't mind it. I like it. So. I, all right. I was just worried about, like, the people, like, oh, yeah, well, you send your shit here then. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, us Americans, like, send our shit to Australia. Mm. And, you know, Garrett tried that, didn't. Kind of pan out, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe yeah. there's maybe it'll happen again in the future. But yeah, you never know. But um, yeah, I think for the immediate future, I think most of the guys want to come here. And but yeah, definitely some sort of a hub would be would be great. And we can uh, hell do it. I'd love to just move here. To be honest with you, really? Yeah. Interesting. Why? Because I just want to get around stuff. Like if I'm going to do this stuff, I'd rather have a house here and just fly back to Australia for no reason to drive jet cars. <laughs> You could drive jet cars in the U.S. We're pretty lenient on jet car I driving. I would definitely drive it to the Maccas and get breakfast with it. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to stop calling it Maccas in the U.S., but... Oh, McDonald's. Yeah. That would actually... You would confuse every McDonald's employee ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already do that anyway. They look at me like, are you from Canada? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. We scared? don't have any shaker bags for our fries. No, that sucks. Yeah, you don't get that. I don't know why. I don't know why that has to be a but, uh, cultural thing. But yeah, maybe that's an option. Bit of a home base. I don't know where you'd put it, Texas or Florida or. I feel like you'd like to be central. Yeah, you but know. Florida's where a lot of it happens. It is, and I like Florida. The weather, the opportunities. I like Florida, but at the same time, it's a long way to drive to Vegas. <laughs> but if you live here, you probably you could probably put it on a truck and fly. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's different options, but well, like an eight car transport is pretty reasonable when you have eight cars going on exactly. there. Exactly. And eight cars trailering themselves out there is pretty unreasonable. I'd like to buy a racetrack <laughs> in the middle of America and just have a base with a testing track, and that'd be cool. There's a few for sale. Where are they cheap? I feel like there was one for sale for like a million bucks. And so that's affordable? That's it, that a, not it, cheap, but like, you know. Does it have a house on it? It's a racetrack. I don't know, maybe. You have I an RV probably, already? I, just, I got my RV already. Yeah, so I just, just live in the RV and I just mow the grass and drive race cars. As long as you got a hookup. You know, as long as you can <laughs> hook power and I thought you just turn that tap stuff. on when you're going down the highway. If you're going quick enough, it doesn't really make a smell. Yeah, you just open the green, the gray water, and you yeah. just say, see yeah. you later, dude. Yeah, even the black, whatever. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it near the squirrel farms. Yeah, because uh, it's easy to get water in it, but it's yeah. hard to get gray water and black water out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we'll definitely have to look into something like that. But, yeah, it's, um, no, it's all happening, mate. As I said, everyone's... Everyone's really looking forward to coming over. And <laughs> so there was some questions. There were like uh, some comments that I saw, and they were like, "How is he finan- How is he funding this?" <laughs> and you told me later how. Yeah. But I don't know if you wanted to like uh, about the business style. Yeah, because you know. Yeah. Uh, it's also good because people are probably like, "Oh, he just comes from family money, this, that, and the other things." So it's like, yeah, no, my parents aren't rich. Uh, so I, and this is the whole thing about living life. Like I'm a big believer in, you know, you only, well, I, I believe you only live once and that's as, as good as we know, that's all you get. And you're guaranteed this one. So yeah, you guaranteed this life. So one day I was at work and I was just, you know, something happened and I had like 30 at my, sometimes I had 30 employees, you know, it was a lot of stress and a lot of work and I just thought, you know, there's got to be better things to do in life than just work till I'm 60 and, you know, just, you know, retire and I'm too old to do anything. Why don't I really wanted to do what I like doing and that was driving my car. So I had a choice. I said, right, I can drive my car. It doesn't pay very well here. So what I thought is I go, right, if I sell my business, that gives me financial freedom to get everything to America and set myself up and get a lot of rid of a lot of my bills because I wouldn't be making any money. So I did it. So I, I sold my business and I, I literally packed, like, you know, packed my car up and come over here. And it, at the moment, it doesn't make any money, but there's the option down the track if I want to move and get a visa and all the stuff and come here and, you know, and and the, the, the burnout sport's big enough, you can quite easily make a living because America makes that happen. Australia doesn't make that. If Australia makes a lot of money off burnouts, the promoters keep it. Hmm. The drivers don't get it. So it's – but here there's that there's that many more events and you can actually sort of probably, you know, TV shows and this and that and, you know, um, I've – yeah, I've got a bit happening on the side with other stuff that we got going on which hopefully is going to turn in some good money and there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel and none of this would be possible without being in America. So it was by far the best decision – I've ever made is to follow, do what you want to do, you know, just take the risk. And if it doesn't work out and in 12, 16 months time, I send my car back to Australia. I I had the time of my life. I, I did everything I said I was going to do. Biggest thing I find is people tell you they're going to do stuff and they don't do it. They don't follow through. And that's one thing I've said to myself, if I make a plan and say, I'm going to do this, I need to follow it out. Yeah, and because, your business, you were paving, right? You were, yeah, Ashfield and Bitchman, yeah. 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 And so I'm, you could always start that back up. Uh, well, I can't because <laughs> I got signed a fall. I can, but I not for a long time. And I, I oh, okay. Yeah, I still own machinery and stuff, which I could sell if I got tight on money, um, mm-hmm. which is sitting in the paddock right now. But, I, I, you know, I just leave it there. It doesn't cost me anything at the moment. So, mm-hmm. But as I said, yeah, it's – I just – if I would like get to the end of my life and I and I hadn't done what I'm doing right now, I'd kick myself because mm-hmm. it's just yeah, it's the ultimate feeling of just doing what you love and trying to make the best out of it, as opposed to doing what the sheep's do and the herds and which is not really trying to live out their dreams. I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to try and shoot for the stars and you know if you land on the moon, big deal. But you know, and if it all fails and, and if it fails and there's every chance it could or would. I can live with the fact knowing I gave it 110% and, I, you know, I gave it a shot and that's, I'm happy, I'm, I'm happy with that decision. 
Yeah, I I love to hear that. I'm I'm glad you went into that a little bit because yeah, because you know a lot of people see what you're doing and mm. they do the oh must be nice like yeah you know somebody probably you know is footing the bill for this and all that kind of stuff and, mm. and a lot of people get that conception about a lot of people yeah. but hearing that you know you mm. just kind of pushed all the chips into the <laughs> yeah. table and said yeah. You know, do, do or die, make or break type of situation mm. here. Like, and 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 a lot of these guys coming are in exactly the same position. Really, and there's another guy, Kieran. He's got another car coming. He's sorry, he's on his own container because he timeline didn't work out. But he rang me up after our first podcast, and he goes, "Dude, you've inspired me." I said, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "I'm going to sell everything I own, and I'm going to put my car in a in a, in a container, and I'm going to take it to America." I'm just going to see what happens and I'm just going to live my best life and, you know, hopefully I can make something with it. If I don't make something out of it, you know, I've had a great time and I'll somehow get back to Australia and go back, get a job and go back to a normal life. But people see the opportunity that this, and you honestly live in, in America is the greatest country in the world when it comes to opportunity. And that's no more, no more evident than now. It's like, I can see why people do what they're doing, but all of us Aussies just want to come over here and said, do try and yeah experience it all so yeah. well we got 400 million people in this country <laughs> yeah you know yeah. there's so much like mm. there's so much going on and there's so many people and like yeah it, like even you know australia is only populated like right around, around that one lines. little coastline yeah. like most of it's kind yeah. of empty mm. and most of it's like coal mines and desert yeah desert yeah. and mm. cattle so like it's it's just a little different of like a mm. culture I guess and the opportunity is so yeah. different. Yeah, and it's it's refreshing too to be surrounded by people like that that are literally willing to throw everything away on the chance to you know do something special. So do you think the Australian government has stifled a lot of that? A lot of motorsports? Oh <sighs> uh, yeah, it's a it's a definitely a dying thing. Like they're a, pushing out motorsports in a way that's making you guys mm kind of look for the way out uh like it, it, not in the foreseeable future like 100 percent, but it's definitely getting harder racetracks are shutting down um the general public looks at like a car guy and they're a bit you know a bit of a bogan like a bit of a uh, sort of you know it's just the the times are changing it's like um but it, it's not like immediate but i can definitely see it coming within the next you know 10 to 20 years, it'll be like, no more, you know? So yeah. there'll always be stuff, but nothing like, you know, America's very uh, patriotic and they're like, like you know, they won't take my V8 Chevy or whatever. Like, I'm, like that's such a cool attitude to have. And Australia, some, you know, it's just you're getting outnumbered because the, the, the numbers aren't there in Australia. It's very easy for them to just go, no, nah, this is what's happening. Like it or leave it, sort of thing. So yeah, it's kind of I I get that. Yeah, it's pretty easy to stifle a small community mm. where we have huge power numbers and yeah, we fight the EPA pretty tooth and nail. <laughs> yeah. We try to yeah, yeah. and you yeah. guys get a bit more leeway than we do too. You know, like there's been rules in Australia that they've put in place where you know if you're a bike member, a bikey member, you can't even talk to two other bikey members in a pub or you go to jail. <laughs> it's like a crazy member if you're like a bikey like a like a motorcycle harley davidson riding dude so in australia they were pretty badass like they were like um they were like into some bad stuff yeah like right? um you know They're like a prison gang on wheels mm -hmm. yeah so well not all of them but the majority of the younger ones were and in the state i lived in which is queensland they had like it's called the vlad law it was like well, you couldn't hang out with two other biking members in a public place. And if you got caught uh, con like hanging out with two other well-known or other known biking members, they just put you in jail. How can they tell? Well, they just know. I don't know. They know. By the way you're yeah. dressed? Yeah. Like they, if you're they, wearing like a jacket? That <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. Wearing like a leather satchel or something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like but he could just be gay. <laughs> oh, it's, dude, they just like... People would report you and stuff, and there was like a number you could ring and ride up on a Harley or have it like club tattoos and yeah. stuff. They we just, had like um, angels, whatever, some kind of biking gang mm. for a long time out here. But I think biking gangs are pretty gone. Yeah, well, they, they they've gone and they're pretty much all but gone in Australia because this law just killed it, like just killed it. 
And this, this is what some of the strongest opinionated people in Australia with it. And there's a lot of good ones, like the Rebels Motorcycle Gang. They were huge, man. They were massive. They, were, they had chapters everywhere, and they weren't all bad people. There were a lot of good people. They did charity stuff and kids' rides. Um, but there was a lot of bad as well, people that were in it for the wrong reason, power, you know, selling drugs and all the rest of the stuff. Hmm. And the, the government just turned around and goes, we're just going to make all these rules. If you don't like it, see what happens. And then there was dudes going to jail for no reason and they just, you can't even fight it. They write the laws, you know, they just said, <laughs> you're done. Pack her in the trailer. Mate. Yeah. So, like you're the bad guy. Yeah. So and, Sorry. Yeah, and that was all passed through parliament and they just, too bad, so sad. So they 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 just ruined it. well not ruined it, but they just shut it down. There's it's not really a thing anymore. That's so weird. Mm. I mean, if you try to do that here, people will be up in arms. I would hope because well, that's a that, but... huge. I mean, that's a huge violation of freedom. Our you know in the Constitution mm. we have um, freedoms of we have freedom of speech, yeah, and then we also have freedom to gather. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you can't, as long as you're not in a bikey gang and there's three, you can gather wherever you want. <laughs> yeah. If you got a ute, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not a, four, not a crew cab, you're more than two. They so. should have just been smart enough to, you know, mm-hmm. get a sport bike. <laughs> Crazy, man. Crazy. That's so weird. So, yeah. I mean, I like what, yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is why some things just don't work. And I them. agree. Like, I think most people that own motorcycles should be in jail. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, some of them they'll end up in a worse spot with yeah. Rims. Our Florida laws are crazy. Like there's no helmet laws in Florida. Yeah. No insurance laws on a bike. If you oh, really own don't it, need insurance. If, if you own it outright, you don't need insurance. Oh perfect. I was yeah. thinking about buying one for the RV. Yeah. So if you own a bike outright, you don't need insurance. Yeah. Okay. You also don't need to wear a helmet, which is, I mean, I don't care if you wear a helmet or not. You're yeah, crazy you're for own, not yeah. wearing a helmet, but like. You can fall off and, like, that's it. Like, it doesn't take much. So you need registration for a bike? <laughs> You'd probably be fine without it. So if I was to buy, like, a Grom, do I need to do anything? I just buy it outright for cash? Technically, but, like, I don't see anyone stopping you. Yeah. You could go, I, I would almost guarantee you could go drive your Hilux down to the pub <laughs> and no one would stop you. Well, I'd, I'd catch me pretty quick when I run out of fuel after four kilometers, but uh, but if yeah. you, but like in you know a situation where you just put some ninety three in it and you yeah. could just go cruise it, yeah, no one would stop you. Yeah, right. I don't. I I really like a cop may give you a thumbs up. Yeah, maybe they'd stop and ask you about it, but like I don't think they would. They wouldn't throw you in jail. They wouldn't. Yeah, it's got maybe no. They'd be like, yeah. go home. It's got no. It hasn't got a lot of safety features, but anyway, what safety? I mean, like headlights, tail lights, blinkers, seat belts. Yeah. Windows. Yeah. <laughs> Anything like that. That's fine. This is all detail. <laughs> it doesn't even have side windows. No, just, just Zeus clips on and off. Oh, I didn't windows. even realize that last time I saw it. No. Yeah, because I guess I didn't look at it for that long. Kind You're of probably looking that. at the blower. It's hard to notice other stuff. It's green yeah. too, by the way. Yeah, it is green. I noticed <laughs> that. Got a little green yeah. to it. That's why people look at the paint job and I said, don't worry if it doesn't look 100% because people aren't looking at the paint job. Mm-hmm. They're just mesmerized by what's in the engine bay. So Maybe we just maybe it's something about green because we have this green Mustang here that always wins everything too. Yeah. Brella Sala, you know, Brella Sala reference for anybody listening. But yeah. he always wins everything. Maybe it's just green. Money's green. Green money. I don't know. <laughs> it just works. It just yeah. <laughs> kind of happens. Fair, since I painted my car green, it's gone pretty Wins most things ago. Even back in Australia, huh. I think it's last four out of five events at one. I may have to change my Camaro's paint color to some. Like we can go down to Home Depot and get some cans. I'm pretty talented on cans, so I like to <laughs> like to be a bit of a canner, canner sewer. <laughs> I've always wanted to like have four people with the same color. And yeah. How fast you can change a car. Those Rust Oleum cans. Have you seen them? Yeah, the big with like the big massive spray pattern. Yep. Dude, you can spray a car in like five minutes. Yeah, like if you commit a crime, you can do a color change. Yeah, like Grand Theft Auto back in the day when you go through the shop and change colors. Yeah, easy. Oh, it'd be no problem. The taping <laughs> takes time, but anyway, we'll worry about that later. Yeah, you don't have to tape it. Some you can if you do it really good, you could just spray some water on the windows and just wipe it off real quick. Yeah. You know, like get the windows wet enough and just <laughs> Maybe. 
<laughs> I haven't tried, so that's yeah. all theory at this point. Yeah. Uh, what's that else is happening in burnouts then? What is um what has changed in the last year? Like rules wise and uh, just anything? Is there any big progression? Anything we're missing? Did, did I touch on the fact that burnout masters isn't a part of Simon anymore? Sure you did, but you didn't say that you were responsible. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I was responsible. I wasn't responsible for him. Uh, well, I don't. Oh, I'm definitely not responsible for. Well, him you splitting. ruined a 20-year legacy. Well, <laughs> with one interview. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I definitely some hotshot kid that doesn't even have a burnout car in Australia <laughs> yeah, yeah. ruined a 20-year event. <laughs> uh, well, that, well, let's woo. <laughs> I wasn't responsible for the split. That was because of a sale and. The fact that it was always on, there was always going to split at some point. It happened a lot sooner than what people were thinking, um, but obviously they've gone on the out on their own now because someone else would like to probably own, you know, everything they do on their own show. Be kind of crazy not to. Yeah, and they can have monopoly of all that, which is you know makes sense for a business side of thing. Um, so that does two things. They had to they put their prize money out to fifty thousand dollars for for winning winning the pro burn from fifteen. Pro, so. You know, 15 or 20, whatever it was, they put it up a lot. And I may or may not have said this in a podcast and they've exactly copied it. But so you could sort of thank me for, for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm probably the favorite. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really on the Christmas card list anymore. But nonetheless, it doesn't really affect us too much today. Uh, so, so there's that. And then Burnout Masters is uh, currently getting really involved in the American stuff, helping the guys out here. That's pretty massive news. What else is there? That's about it. Yeah, I mean, it's been a I'm pretty uneventful of... year. I mean, you've done a lot more on YouTube side of things since you were here last. You've kind of mm. stepped into that a lot more. You've yeah. you know, you've bought a jet car. You've done a lot more, like, shenanigans, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I thought, how hard could it be, right? Yeah. And then I quickly discovered it's a hell of a lot of work and it's not easy. And uh, I just had no, so I didn't have a job to go back to. So I thought, what am I going to do with my time apart from gardening at home and stuff around the house? Spend time with the kids? <laughs> yeah, no, I do that at night. Yeah, uh, no, take about 45 minutes a day. Yeah, yeah. so I, I decided to give YouTube a go. And, and I'll tell you what, man, it's been one of the most rewarding sort of challenging little segments of my life because you have to try and figure out what works and, and time frames and so my my whole YouTube vibe for me is I buy stuff off marketplace and I make it awesome. So that's my thing. So my my video that has been keeping a massive secret, which is eighty percent done, when I'd go back to Australia I'll do that. But uh, the jet car. So the jet car come off marketplace, it was around the world. People had one here for sale in Florida. The one for sale here in Florida is my car. People were just ripping it off. It shut down Australian uh, marketplace one night. It was everywhere. Every sing, nearly every single post on my Facebook was this jet car. So I see this jet car, and I go, "All right, I need to, uh, I need to buy this." And I rang the dude, and I remember I was in the backyard. I was pushing my daughter on the swing because someone sent it to me, and it had been up for like fifteen minutes. So I'm ringing, 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 ringing. And finally, got through to him. Said, "Hey, mate, where do you live? I've got, I want to come buy this car." I was pushing her on the swing, and he goes, "No, no, no, mate, no, nah, no." Nah. I'll, I can't do anything today, come tomorrow. And he must have like looked at my profile and he sort of recognised he might, might have known me or known one of my friends or known me through someone. He goes, hey, man, I sort of know who you are. I'm happy for you to... It was real sketchy too at the start. I'm happy for you to come out and have first dibs on this car. He got 400 people trying to buy this car at once. So he was showing me the messages and he goes, no, nah, I know I know you're not a, like a scammer or anything. Like, I'm, you know, you got first dibs. Be at this address at 9 a.m. So it was an hour and a half drive from my house. Got up early, didn't even have the cash. I had to go to the bank and get some cash out. And I was at the dude's house at 9 a.m. and he didn't answer the phone. And I was sweating. Like I was like, I need, like in my head, I've, I've already bought this car. Even if it was half of what was in the picture, I was buying it. Like I'd committed to it. So anyway, I bought the car and I got it back and I thought, I want to do a YouTube build series of a jet car, which I know nothing about. Nothing. Like I know zero about jets. So... That was cool. Not really. I had to do a bit of YouTubing and Googling. They're pretty simple. Just fuel. Fuel and air. Just kind of keep pulling cards. in their own air. <laughs> so in, in theory, yeah. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of wires and lines and stuff. And But this jet engine was stuffed inside a VN Commodore, which a VN Commodore is 
one of Australia's like like show pieces, like a fox body. It's like a mm-hmm. it's really like a, a I forgot the word I used for it earlier, but it's a yeah, nice legend car. Legend like a, car. Yeah, yeah. Legacy yeah. deal. Yep. So not only did I have to make the car look good, I had to make the car go well. And the safety was massive because jet engines are really deadly. If those uh, compressor blades come out of the engine, that will just saw you in half. So I wasn't trying to die in this car. So I had four weeks. My mate Andy, which is a fabricator, which was in America with me last time, one of the best car builders in Australia, he helped me. So thank God he helped me. And my videographer, John. So us three, we made this series in, in, in four weeks. And, mate, I tell you what, it was, one, it was an awesome experience. Like it, and the, the sponsors that got involved, we had about over $30,000 worth of people just messaging in and, and offering to give us products. That was the best thing about YouTube. I couldn't believe so many people just want to give you stuff. Yeah, so, just wanted to work on the, just wanted their name involved somehow. Yeah, and just just generally good people. And like we used all their products, we portrayed them really well. And I tried my best to make it funny. I don't know if you caught many of them, but they're just, for me, they were flowy. And, and yeah, I, I enjoyed making them. So it's. I caught a, I caught more of it on Facebook and Instagram yeah, of what you were the doing shorts with and it. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And I was enjoying that. And. Like I said, I was like, I thought it was more of a gimmick and like it had like a regular <laughs> engine in it and you could yeah. like blip the, yeah, you yeah. know, no. doesn't even have an engine in it or no. Just, no. just the, just the jet. It is. What straight. is it like a JA80 or something? J80. It is a Viper 201 Mark II. Okay. Yeah. So what, if that makes sense to you, it probably makes more sense to you than me if you know anything about jets, but. Somebody does. Yeah. Someone knows it and it roughly makes 3000 horsepower. And when you add an afterburner to it, that makes 70% more, which is probably 5,000 horsepower. Yeah, you don't need that. <laughs> and I drove it in the finale video. We did 12 or 13 episodes of this build from start to finish. In the finale video, I drove it around a track uh, near my house, and it was the sketchiest thing but coolest thing I've ever done. So jet engines aren't like a piston engine where you come into a corner and you back off the throttle. You back off the throttle – and it's still going because you got to, it's laggy and then you get back on the throttle, you got to get on the throttle early and spool it like a massive turbo car. So and using hand thrust. Yeah, so I had, I had a hand throttle up here and the steering wheel was, because the engine's so big, the, the, the seat's off center. So <laughs> it's so hard to drive and it feels so wrong, but it's so right at the same time. <laughs> Is it hot? <laughs> uh, well, I built a scatter shield. We had heat proofing sent in from one of the companies yeah. we worked with, car builders. So we got all the heat out of the car. We we sh- fully shelved everything. Like it, man. Yeah, we 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 did some good work on that car. I'll have to look into it a little more because I haven't mm. I haven't dug too far into the jet. Well, do, even just the finale video shows a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. What was the channel again? It's um. So Luxifer Kyle. Yeah. Got it. Just yeah. Want to make sure we reiterated that right as we're talking <laughs> yeah, about the car. interesting stuff that yeah. they should go see. I have two percent American uh, subscribers, so I'm looking to change that hopefully. <laughs> That's a solid 2% right there. Yeah, but is it like, is it, I started this channel in, when I was in America last time and everyone's like, oh, your first thousand followers is the hardest. I got a thousand subs in one day. Mm-hmm. I was at SEMA and then I got 4,000 watch hours the next day. So I was partnered on YouTube in three days. Yep. And I was like, this is easy. This is easy. <laughs> Made a video at SEMA, uh, the Ken Block one, the, the, the Ken Block tribute video, I think it went 70,000 views. And then I made went to Weston's house, but we didn't release anything from Weston's because he's like a bit of a process. But I went to Freedom Factory and made a video of when I won uh, the last rivals, mm-hmm. 170,000 views, 5,000 subs from one event. And I was like, oh, YouTube ain't that hard. Like, mm-hmm. You just got to be consistent and that. And then I got back to Australia, released the videos, and it's just noodles. No viewers, still decent click-through rates, de- decent, like, you know, it'd still be up, you know, 15% of click-through rates, which is good. Uh, and just all the stuff's looked good, but it just wasn't getting in front of eyes. I wonder if there's something something going on there where videos uploaded to Australia have different laws. I, I, I 100% believe it's a different server. I think that there's like different um, web laws to mm. what you put out and Australia has different. I think it just gets throttled. So I realistically need to move all my stuff over here somehow. <laughs> Use a know. VPN. <laughs> no, I tried that. Didn't make a difference. Didn't make a difference. I even uploaded my last video. It's the finale, but I uploaded it from America on my mm. laptop in the RV. 
And it's going, it went good, maybe 20,000, which is not bad for mine stuff, 20,000 views. It's not even really good as what it could be, but it's like, but I don't know if that's just because the finale got lots of views. Yeah. Or because I was in America. So I don't, I don't know, but it's, uh, you're going to have to like <laughs> send them over to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I, I would have tried. I, I was thinking about trying. I was like, who do I know in America? I can just like uh, Google drop, uh, Google, whatever you call it. Yeah. Dropbox or whatever. Send them over. <laughs> Give me an admin on my page. <laughs> or or um, you put them as drafts. Yeah. And then somebody you, yeah. over in America hits I upload. I don't think that would work. I don't know. It's uh <laughs> But I'm, I'm I'm that's my side project. So the main one I got some burnout stuff happening with sponsors and the monster energy stuff's all happening and that's all looking really good. And and then uh Hey you touched on that a little bit last time. Yeah, so I'd signed all the contracts and stuff, and my first big show is in uh, Utah, Salt Lake City, the Monster Energy Supercross World Finals. So, so you're bringing the car, bringing the car, to uh, put on a show, put on a show in front of the crowd with Monster, and they're um, painting me up a helmet and stickers on the car that's and awesome. all the all the coolest stuff ever. So, that's really really cool. Um, you should see if you can get them to do some exhibitions at like a Monster Jam. Well, that that's my plans. Like I want a Monster th- Truck yeah. event. Well, anywhere they go, if I like. Monster are the, the grand masters at activations. Yeah. So they're like, if you go to an event and Monster are doing an activation, you know that's the coolest stuff ever. They got freestyle guys and drifters mm-hmm. and Harley guys doing burnouts and they were missing a burnout guy. So I sort of tried to get in there and it's been a long process and I had some help from some good people um, from Monster all over the world. And eventually now we got into a spot where I've hooked up with the US dudes and it's, it's the main pretty much the main reason I come here was for that. Um, plus burnouts, like I'm not really, yeah. yeah. And so doing the burnouts on the side's cool too because it's just more stuff we can do. But yeah, my side project would, I'd love to do YouTube as a fill-in, not even a fill-in, like a job, you know. So doing it, you know, as I said, my vibe is buying stuff off Marketplace and doing ridiculous things to it. There's some cool stuff in America on Marketplace. Yeah, I could do it anywhere. Quite a bit of things. <laughs> I could do it in Venezuela America. if I had to. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's, but there's no one. I'm not really stepping on anyone's toes. I'm not really. No one really does that sort of thing. Doesn't um, matter. YouTube's a big space. It's a big space. Yeah. yeah. Who cares if it overlaps? I mean, mm. and you know, like it's just you see guys like Garrett and and uh, Weston and all those other dudes that are just like they're just so professional and so sort of good at what they do. It's just. You know, it just gives you like inspiration to go. Geez, it'd mm. be nice to sort of, you know, really give it a crack because these guys are just slaying it. You know, so and you only need realistically ten percent of what they do, five mm. percent of like that success yeah. to be yeah. very well living. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, obviously, those you know, they're pinnacle of this mm. world of automotive YouTube. Yeah, but even like a. You know, even that's how I think. Like, yeah. I, I don't, like, I don't need to be that size. Just a yeah. Oh, you're well in your way small too. Small portion know? of it. Yeah. Yeah, but then the flip side is like, you got to think about how big your audience potential is. Like, mm. you know, I do an automotive podcast, so hmm. obviously it's never going to get the same amount of views as yeah. a video like that. That's like yeah. big over the top. Yeah. But I'm. I, I don't expect it to. I'm but you're chipping away, doing live yeah. in my zone, I guess, and yeah, and, and and if this is what you enjoy doing, it's a, you know you don't want to go out and make lawn care videos because I guarantee people love lawn care. Yeah. But is that something you want to make videos on? Yeah, I'm not going to TikTok dance. No, that's right. <laughs> Even if it makes good money and people watch it, yeah. I'm not going to you know. So so at the end of the day, if you're doing something you enjoy doing, and you know you're making a living out of it, yeah. That's winning, like you said. Like you don't. I don't even care if I don't make money off YouTube itself. I want to like be nice. Don't get me wrong, but as long as it pa- if it paid for the stupid stuff I'm doing, like mm-hmm. that jet car video cost me fifty thousand dollars. I'm definitely not going to recoup that. You know, yep. definitely not. I could if I sold the car. I'd make a really good profit, but I don't want to sell the car. I just want to like I'm attached to it now. It sort of belongs to me now. So, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things. It's it's a good. I like the chase of it. So well, even we were talking about before where if there's two people that have the same burnout car and they're yeah. both top tier burnout cars mm. and they're looking to sponsor someone, they're going to go for the guy that has the social media presence yeah. 
that you you have and yeah. are building yeah. versus the guy that's like, oh, I don't do YouTube videos because I don't want to be in front of a camera. That's stupid. Yeah, and the character. And that's how you, I'm sure you've heard a million people say that. Mm. I yeah. don't like being in front of the camera. That's stupid. Mm. Well, I used to be like that, and I used to th I thought, you know what, if this is what I want to do, I need to be confident and talking to people and cameras and sponsors, and and you have to learn pretty quickly that if you're not that person, maybe this isn't the sport for you. And there's a lot of guys in Australia that you point a camera at them, they're like, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, great drivers, but just not great yeah. camera people. And uh, there's people that are great on camera that are not great drivers. So it's it's sort of you got to have the really the mix, and um, if you don't have it, well then you know, it's very hard for you to succeed, you know, in, in some things. So, yeah, definitely I work hard on social media and, yeah, as I said. Well, from my standpoint too is, you know, I've done 90 episodes of this. Mm. I can usually, like, sitting across from somebody for a long period of time, you kind of get a gauge of how yeah. good they can be on camera and, like, yeah. if they're talkative enough and yeah, you can definitely do that. And there's a few people I've talked to that, like, it's like, oh, shit, like, I'm, like, really – working to you get, know. get something out of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a mosquito in here. I haven't seen many of them in here. No. Everywhere in Australia. Oh, I had it, but it, it made it out. But, <laughs> yeah, like I've kind of gotten a gauge of like yeah the social media presence, but it's so hard to do a 10-minute video and I ramble, so it's so hard to cut myself from like mm. – like I'll film like a an hour of video and I'm like now I have to somehow condense it, cut all this stuff out. And mm -hmm. I've heard a good tip is don't fall in love with any footage. Yeah, because you got to be prepared to cut anything if it's not moving the storyline forward or if it's not yeah. worth like you don't need to over explain everything. You don't need to. You just got to cut it. Yeah. Say too bad it's gone. And if it's mon like monumental in your head. It might not make sense to anyone else watching, so you just, it yep. doesn't work. You know, I might have told you something on the way here that makes sense now to you, but you're like, they're not going to get it, so why mention it? Yeah, and, like, that happens a lot in videos where you get so in love with all the footage that you want it to be a 30-minute video, but yep. that's not going to be entertaining enough. No. <laughs> so you need to cut that down to, like, yeah. 10 minutes. Film for eight hours, get an eight-minute video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's probably Weston's move. Yeah, yeah, he's uh he does good quality stuff. Yep. He I did a video with him. He released not too long ago. I thought it was a really good video, but it was condensed. We were there for four days, and we he condensed it really well. But they do some good good quality stuff. I know you almost lose so much in that. It's crazy. Oh. Like he almost needs like two channels where it's like mm. here's the video, and then like two weeks later, mm. like an hour and a half one comes out. Yeah, and he's the, he's the pole opposite to Garrett. So obviously they're both car guys. But Weston might post once a month, and Garrett, like lately, he's been posting nearly every day. Could be every day. I don't know. I don't. He uh, posts a lot, but he's getting a million views on you know yeah. twenty four hours. Like he's he's killing it. So obviously the the way he he approaches his videos and the way Weston does his, and then you got Whistling Diesel does his way, and it's pretty cool. Like it just you know it's different. It's cool. Yeah, it's a it's a such a cool world. There's so much you could study it for mm. so long too. Like if you get lost yeah. in like. <laughs> Algorithms. Seeing what works and yeah. what doesn't work and, you know, there's the factor of, like, what you can't see mm. is the person and the personality. Yeah. You know, you can see the data all day, mm. but you can't see the mm. the magic factor of, like, people just liking a person. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sort of started off with the whole, I'm just going to make videos and if people watch them, they watch them. And then you get like a couple of good videos where you're like, oh, people, heaps of people are watching them. And then you like get sort of sad when it's like, oh, I only got 10,000 views on this one. I felt like it was worth more. So it's just hard at the start, you know. That YouTube one out of 10 is a cold hearted bitch. Well, the, yeah, my last one's at one now. And, but sometimes the videos would start at one. And then they would slip down the line, like yeah. depending on what time you release it. It's like because <laughs> you just YouTube gives you that one out of ten, and yeah, yeah. you die and you yeah. live and die by it. Yeah, and you look for refreshing it every like half an hour. It's still yeah. at one, still at one. And, and there's it. such like a dopamine yeah. when it hits one. It's like yeah, there's like confetti and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not hitting that one, it's like because <laughs> I used to gauge it off my big video from Flor from Cletus's last event here, and it was like it just rocketed off like the um. You know, the amount of uh, views and stuff it got early on. <clears throat> so I knew if it, something was sitting at one, 
when that video was on there, it was really going well. But it disappeared off there for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's older or... It's yeah, because it's only 10. Yeah. It's yeah. only the most recent 10. Yeah, so. recent 10. So it's disappeared off there. So I was getting something the other day, went on to one, and the views were flying in. I was like, oh, this is going to be a cracker. This is going to be a banger. We've done it. Right, we figured it out. And then I realized that the big videos weren't even on there. <laughs> or Western video just dropped off or something like yeah. that. And I was like, oh, yeah, no. But anyway. Yeah, and YouTube gives you so much data to get lost in i try not yeah. to get lost in it too much but it's yeah I, I know the impressions are pretty important and the click-through rate and stuff like that and uh you know i've done research to know what's you don't even know what's good you think you know say a 15 percent um click-through rate you're like 15 percent. that's 15 percent is great mm -hmm. you know especially for yeah, a high, high viewed viewed you know number and your impressions are high and you know relative to your views and but yeah it's hard to base all this stuff i suppose yeah it's it's a it's a crapshoot. <laughs> you're kind of you, you feel you, like you're just tossing things into an abyss. Yeah, like there's just like a big hole in the ground. Yeah, and you're just like, maybe it'll hit. Maybe I'll hear the splash. It'll mm. hit the bottom. Yeah, like that's kind of the yeah. essence I, of YouTube. I think it's just you just gotta do it for fun and can't expect. I think if you try too hard, you'll, you know, you'll just get yourself down because it's not something that, you're not an overnight sensation. It doesn't work like that. Like Instagram, you can, I can get a real. I posted a reel the other day. I reused some media, put a sound on it, went 26,000 likes, 25,000 likes, you yeah. know, in like a week, which is great. That's like viral, nearly viral on Instagram. And then you post something the next day and it goes 2,000 likes. But you can't, you don't have the, op that's not a thing on YouTube where you post a video and just hits the right, I, I don't believe it is anyway. It just instantly blows up and, you know, has everyone watching it. It just doesn't happen. It's like a slow burn. Mm -hmm. So you got to put the effort in and the work in. So that's why now I thought YouTube wasn't that hard to get. But now I look at these guys that are like we've been talking about and I appreciate how much they put into it. You know, eight years. Garrett was saying yesterday, he said eight years he's been doing this for. So that's a lot of time, you know, to be full on doing stuff. Yeah, like none of it's an overnight success. None of no. it. No. And so many people think it is, like, that same, like, must be nice thing. Like, yeah, yeah. look at my first video from eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, like, the yeah. Mr. Beast story, yeah. That's when you start, like, Garrett, like, yeah, eight years is, like, yeah. of doing this, like, mm. it's a small hammer. Yeah. And you just keep chipping away at it. And eventually, <laughs> when you have so many videos, mm. your average views per week it's are higher. just higher because yeah. you just people have... People watching bits and pieces here and there. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, once you have a catalog of 1600 videos mm. even if you get a thousand views on each you make it bank yeah i mean people are looking at all of those so like your weekly average views just keep going up because mm. your catalog is just massive at that yeah, point yeah. even if it's like you know i have 300 videos even if it's like mm. 10 people watching mm. old videos here and there it's like yeah. and yours is sort of evergreen content too yeah with the podcast stuff yeah you know now i'm at I think this will probably be episode 84. Yep. So. It's... And if someone like you interview, say, I want to become world champion one day or, you know, That's got true. a job as an actor or something, and people like Google my name <laughs> or YouTube my name, your video will pop up. You know what I mean? Yeah. As, as that happens to anyone you've ever done, it's like you're in the box seat for. Yeah. If somebody <laughs> smart, like. You're a smart guy. Commits a crime or something and <laughs> yeah. like. My my goal is, like, n not a crime or anything, but, like, uh, my podcast, like, Bogetti Studios on, like, one of those, like, shit legacy medias, like CNN mm -hmm. using a yeah. clip. Yeah. Like, yeah. look at what he <laughs> said. <laughs> like, yeah. It doesn't have to be a me, but, like, a guest yeah, of some, yeah. like, because yeah. it's, like, I'm sure at some point someone, something yeah. is going to happen where someone at some point mm. is going to have to be called into question of some <laughs> yeah hopefully for the right reasons you don't want to ah, wrong, you know but. they're always looking for the wrong reasons yeah we're well, getting lynchy over here yeah so what you, what media outlets looking for the right reason to put somebody on yeah controversial they're always looking for somebody that did something wrong yeah that is true i'm sure it'll be me I'm yeah sure. Well, <laughs> i'm sure it'll be like yeah look at him he was talking about this and then he yeah. stormed the capitol <laughs> yeah that's right yeah <laughs> well, all right, man. Uh, we'll wrap this up. I'll get you back to your uh, your your motorhome. Yeah, been, there's always flies doing this stuff. I know we've been going for an hour fifty minutes, man. It, it, 
rips by. It does definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm probably have the uh, skids for kids guys on too before they leave. I want to have them as a group. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Get them talking some shit. Mm. We can all team up on Seth. <laughs> <laughs> You should, uh, yeah, that'd be funny. He's a good sport about it, so I like to. And if he wasn't, he'd be in trouble. Yeah, he's exactly. a big dude. His hands are like three hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if he wasn't, he'd be in the wrong sport. You got to have thick skin to be in the automotive world. You do, because people are gonna harass you. Yeah, like your friends. Yeah, definitely. The and people if, that care about you and people that give you shit. And as long as it's good, good shit, you know, it's you know, you you know, the heart's in the right spot. Well, he's building an ice cream truck. You got to make fun of him a little bit. Yeah, and he has a big block. And he's got a big block. Yeah, that he built. In the, I don't know where he built it. I Hopefully think, a workshop. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully it wasn't a park or out something. Out in the snow. Yeah, it just kicks <laughs> it around in the snow. <laughs> yeah. But all right, man. Um, well, we already talked about it a little bit. Well, where can they find you at? Give them a quick rundown. Uh, so if you're interested in any sort of YouTube content, uh, Lux for Kyle my YouTube channel. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Lux, it's all Lux for Kyle, so... I think we just yep. cracked 60,000 followers on Instagram, which is a nice little milestone for me. So, Hell yeah. Back in America, Back 60K. In America. <laughs> yeah. And um, everything, uh, at least YouTube, because that's the uh, easiest to link, will mm. be in the description. Oh, awesome. The other yeah. stuff's kind of... Doesn't, yeah. yeah, it doesn't really connect well into the description nah. of YouTube. Yeah. At least... YouTube's the important one. YouTube's the important one. Yeah. That's the one that people care about. So, mm. guys, go check him out. He'll be out at the Freedom Factory. This will probably come out right before the event so thursday so good timing go check him out in orlando and then freedom factory he'll probably post the details of that event on his instagram if you want to find out more about it and uh yeah hopefully we can win some more eagle trophies and cheer us on be good to have your support somebody put a stop to him really somebody you know somebody with a burnout car or Maybe like a thing of marbles to put in his blower. Somebody put a stop to him somehow. <laughs> no marbles in the blower, but you know, hey, Garrett, uh, Garrett might uh, he might have a good run this time and take a big eagle trophy off me, or he might not. I don't know. I don't know if this was another call out. I feel like he has to call me out now because I called him out and beat him. Historically, <laughs> Toast hasn't had great runs. No. Historically, he's always tried to drive that thing at. 180 mm. percent and it's just sometimes you got to back off to go faster yes you know yeah you know the I old think that's been go slower to go faster sort of deal i think that's been the achilles heel with toast is like imagine he's just be, overshooting imagine it. being him hyped mad event everything fireworks lasers and you get in the car you've been commentating and jumping around or not it's all happening so he's got to just get to that zone. But anyway, I'm sure he'll figure it out. He's a smart yeah, guy. Yeah, he will. He'll just have to do some testing. Good driver but... and a smart guy, so he's definitely going to figure it out. Yeah, well, that'll end it off, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it saucy. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.